Yeah. 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 Yeah
Miss Rogers. State your name, address, please. My name is Jacqueline Rogers. I live at 1420 Ridgeway in Cantonment. I have a couple general um, concerns. One of them is I was made aware of an email that was sent to the county, to the legal, and it was supposed to be forwarded to the chair and the vice chair. It was about um, something on the agenda today, but it brought a broader topic to mind. First of all, I wanted to know, Chairman, did you receive an email? Yes. Okay. Um, is that still on the agenda today? That's not on the agenda. It Yes, sir, Chair. The, not the note, not the, not the notice. Not the email. Not the email. No, sir, it's not. The attached. subject is, but not the notice. Okay. That's correct. All right. I, I just wanted the rest of the board to have a copy of the email. If that's more appropriate for me to wait until that item's on the agenda, I'll be happy to do that. But I brought a copy of the email for everyone on the board. Um, should I distribute that now? I'll give it to you now. If, if if we can bring it up at the time when we discuss the problem. Okay. Yes. Okay. My other concern, what, well, my concern with that whole issue, because I don't know the veracity of that, I don't know any of those people in that email, but it is very concerning, of course. Um, the, my concern is who is vetting these applications? If someone is saying they don't have any convictions or any charges against them, is there someone on the staff or on the competency board that is vetting that to make sure a background check is being done? Because. There, in the past, there are, have been other contractors, maybe even the two that are, you know, in, in the news, that there are issues that they didn't put on what they were supposed to do. And I know at the state level, they do do a background check and they do financial, um, because we've been through that process, they do a financial check. So that is my concern. The other concern I had was about um, declaring any conflicts about ex parte communication. I just wanted to in general, bring out if there's any board members that ha are involved either on either side of any of these disciplinary or probable cause hearings, if they have family members that have liens against any of these contractors. I don't want to see any of these overturned. I think that the hearings have been going well, but I don't want to see them overturned on a technicality. Or if any of them have had ex parte communication with um, outside of the meetings, if they're board members, because these are quasi-judicial hearings. Um, I was made aware that maybe one board member was part of Governor Broxson's um, meeting that the homeowners weren't allowed to attend, but members of the HBA were allowed to attend. If that's a conflict, if it's not a conflict, I think it should still be declared. And so that, those are my two comments there. And I will save the email then for right. that item. Thank, Thank you. you. To address one of your com comments, yes, the uh, every application is reviewed and vetted. That's the, uh, that's the job of the um, uh, director of Tim Talbert, forget <laughs> his name, building official, the whole staff, they vet the application. Now we move to board secretary status report. No item, sir. All right, item 7-1. Please turn on your microphones. <laughs> yes, Mr. Chairman, we have two applicants this morning. The first on the agenda is Alfred R. Chenard III. He is out of town today on business. He has an application for examination for residential contractor. Is Mr. Chenard here? No. He's not here? No. All right. I what? believe, Ms. Rogers, this is the applicant that she had an email in reference to. Okay. And I don't know who any of these people are, but um, I did get this from the county attorney. I asked for, did a public records request, and she gave me a copy. So I verified that it was sent to the county. And beyond that, I haven't verified anything. Thank you. The second on the agenda is Josiah Becker. Well, let's get the first one out of the way first. I believe it's only proper that uh, we entertain a motion to delay the approval of this application 
further uh, to provide an opportunity to investigate this uh, allegation. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to to, to postpone it to next month's meeting. Second. Is there a second? second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. The motion to delay the application for Mr. Alfred R. Shinarad until uh, so this is the uh, allegation in the email is reviewed. Yes, sir. Uh, is approved. Okay, the second on the agenda is Josiah Becker. Mr. Becker, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Josiah Becker, 420 Bay Oaks Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32506. Good to have you here. He has an application for examination for master plumber with gas. What's your recommendation? It is staff's recommendation to approve the application. Very good. Entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. After second. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Ended in discussion. Comments? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the application for examination for Joshua Becker for Master Plumber and Gas is approved. Mr. Becker, do not come back to see us. <laughs> Good enough, thank you. Item 8. Yes, one. sir. Before we start into the probable cause hearings, I would like to have our investigator, Melissa Reber, sworn in. Item 8-1 is Brian Ward doing business as Quality Roofing Solutions, LLC. State certified roofing license number CCC 1328604. Contractor competency board complaint number 220687COM. It's in regard to Daniel Burke, homeowner complainant at 1520 Stefani Circle, Cantonment, Florida 32533. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Is the complainant, Mr. Burke, present? Is the respondent, Mr. Ward, present? Okay, there's no one to swear in. <laughs> um, so we'll move on. Um, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed, Ms. Reber? Yes, it was on June 22nd, 2022. Um, what, were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Yes, I was. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Uh, yes, it is. Did the respondent provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, it is. At this time, staff would request that documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. Read it. Read the whole thing. Read the first paragraph. Okay. I make a motion uh, that uh, I move that all documents and documentations submitted to the Scamby County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigation regarding contractor Brian Ward. Brian Ward. Who? Brian Ward. Brian Ward, case number 220687COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for probable, probable cause. Motion's made. Is there a second? Second. 
Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? Um, there could possibly be a violation of Code Section 1837D8. For, and for what reason? Um, I was hoping that the complainant would be here, but uh, he did allege that he sustained water damage in his living room area and also lost three days of work having to uh, deal with the issues with the contractor. It appears we really don't have much evidence. And without the complainant and respondent being here, this staff really would conclude you don't have any you don't have any position and we don't have anything to review uh, entertain a motion to dismiss motion to dismiss is there a second is there a second i'll second motion made and second any discussion being none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed like sign being none, the motion to dismiss the probable cause hearing for Brian Ward is approved. Move to item 8-2. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item 8-2 is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR28281201. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2208119COM. It's in regard to Tim and Monica Hughes, the homeowner complainants, at 4301 Molino Meadows Drive, Molino, Florida, 32577. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Is the complainant, Mr. and Mrs. Hughes, present? Yes. Is the respondent, Mr. Banks, present? Mr. and Mrs. Hughes, are you going to provide testimony for this case? Yes. If you could please stand and be sworn in. Uh, and just a reminder that Ms. Reber is still sworn in. <clears throat> Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with this board? And on what date was it filed? Yes, a complaint was filed on August 29th, 2022. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about this case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about this case? Uh, I received no response from the respondent. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, they did and it is attached. Did the respondent provide any supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda? No, he did not. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup to this case be moved into evidence. I'm a, entertain a motion to move the evidence into the information into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scambia County staff concerning competency contractor competency board complaints and investigations regarding contractor um, <clears throat> Matthew Banks and case number I got to look at this 2208 COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause motion made is there a second second motion made and seconded any discussion being done all those in favor say aye, aye. opposed like sign being none the motion to move all documentation for item 8-2 concerning Matthew Banks into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? Yes, I was. Allegedly, Code Section 1837C8, Code Section 1837C11, Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, Code section 1837D9J. 
Mr. Hughes, this is your opportunity to address the board. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we contracted with banks to do some major uh, work at our home, and that was in late April. Gave them a uh, $21,500 deposit, which was 50%. Uh, no work was done. We did communicate with him multiple times. And finally, you know, we made the decision, I started paying attention to the news, uh, to put the house on the market in June. And I communicated with him um, about a refund, and he emailed, which is in the evidence, he emailed back in um, June, or uh, let's see, yeah, late June, uh, he's going to refund 19500 of the twenty one five, And obviously, we never saw it, and, you know, communication ended with him. So it's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Sorry that you have to be here. Yeah, us too. Us too. Yeah, but I'm, we're sorry for everybody who's dealing with it. Thank you, gentlemen. The respondent is not present. Very that good. concludes staff's presentation of the case. I have a question. I, reading through the notes, there was no permits. Is that correct? No, sir, there were no permits pulled. In fact, he never started the project. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Any further comments from the staff? No, sir. Okay. Entertain a motion to take the complaint to probable cause. Hmm? It would be a motion to. I mean, to, to discipline air here based on the allegations and possible violations. Mr. Chair, I move that all documents and documentation That's submitted. already been done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, you're taking it to probable cause. I mean, a disciplinary hit. This is all a new process for us guys. Just give us a <laughs> Got to get through this. Okay, take it to disciplinary hit. Yes, sir, that's what is, I was. Is it probable cause, right? It's probable cause so, now. Just for the record, it would be a finding of probable cause, which co which results in it going to disciplinary hearing. Okay. So you that's the motion. That's the motion. Okay. Thank you. So I am going to motion that it goes to disciplinary hearing. Is legal, Ms. Christie? Yes, sir. By the, by the, by uh, by the action of disciplinary hearing, that means you had to have found probable cause. Yes. So I move that all documentations and document. Submitted to the Skimmy County Boom Department staff concerning the Compensation Board complaints and investigation, probable cause testimony as found in the official record transcript regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 2208119COM, be entered into evidence for disciplinary hearing. So he's trying, um, so um, just to assist the board, there's, first there needs to be a finding um, that this should be moved to a disciplinary hearing, so that should be your first motion. And then that second mo that motion that you just stated, that will occur during the disciplinary hearing when we schedule that. That's what I thought. That's how, sorry, we, we've been working on the, the, to assist you on those things. Um, I'd like to amend my motion. That's a great idea. <laughs> just withdraw it. I'd like to withdraw that motion. It, has, it was not seconded, so you can withdraw it. All right, now then, a motion to find him. Find him. Move that all documents and documentation. No, that's already been done. Probable cause has already been done. You're finding him in violation. You, if, I, if I may. Go ahead. The motion that you would probably like one. to make at this time is that um, you want a motion that probable cause has been found and that this be taken to a disciplinary hearing. I move documentation received subsequent to the probable cause hearing be admitted as evidence in the disciplinary hearing regarding contractor Matt Banks, Matthew Banks, case number 2208119COM. So that is a motion that would happen when we're at the disciplinary hearing? The motion today that should be before Mr. Chair, when I withdraw my yes <laughs> motion, and yes. someone else can take care of that. Just a minute. All you have to do is say that probable cause has been found to be valid and we request it go to disciplinary hearing. That's all you got to do. Um, the chairman is correct that you are trying today. What is before you is that it is a probable cause finding and you recommend it be taken to taken to disciplinary hearing. Got it. And you can adopt the language I'm giving you if that would make it easier. 
chair, just to clear up some of the confusion. We have two sets of hearings going on today, and I understand where Mr. Lister is at. We're actually in the probable cause hearing phase. We have disciplinary hearings that will come in next after these probable cause hearings in which those, motion, those types of motions would be made. But right now, we're still in the probable cause hearing phase. So just to provide a little bit of clarification, I understand why there might be some confusion. Yeah, I understand. But back to getting this particular case into disciplinary hearing requires us to find him. The probable cause findings are valid and we need to move it to disciplinary hearing. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, that's correct. That's the motion you need. Got it. Board member. Mr. Lister, um, that's just the words that need to, so, so you just need to. Somebody else can do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I followed the paper y'all gave me. And it's okay. Me. It's okay. Just for the record, what they're referring to is um, some recommendations um, that would assist them in moving these documents along. Um, as far as this hearing, as, as far as the movement for probable cause, that doesn't appear on your paperwork. And those are all available for public record if anyone wants to review them. You want to take a motion? Sure. I'll make a motion that the. Uh, uh, information we got for the probable cause meeting uh, for Mr. Banks go to a disciplinary hearing. Second. Thank you very much. A motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move the hearing on Matthew Banks item 8-2 into disciplinary hearing is approved. Item 8-3. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item 8-3 is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor competency board complaint number 2208123 COM in regard to Brent and Nicole Palmer. Homeowner complainants at 2206 Inverness Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32503. This is in the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Just as a reminder, Ms. Reaver is still sworn in. Is the complainant, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Palmer, present? Ms. Palmer's present. Thank you. And are you going to provide testimony today for this case? Yes, ma'am. Is the respondent, Mr. Banks, present? Ms. Palmer, if you could please be sworn in. Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Uh, yes, there was, August 12th, 2022. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? The respondent uh, did not respond. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? They did and yes it is. Were, uh, did the respondent provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda? No documentation was provided. At this time staff would like to request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. Uh, I um, make a motion that uh, I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scamba County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigation regarding Matthew Banks case number 2208123COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. I correct, I correct that case number. The case number is 2208123COM. That's correct. And is that your motion? Okay, I correct my, um, my case number 2208123COM. This motion's been made. Second. second. Corrected. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? 
Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move all documentation for case eight, three, concerning Matthew Banks is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? And if so, please state your justification. Yes, I was. Code section 1837C8. The respondent uh, abandoned the project. The last time any work was performed was April 2022. Code section 1837C11. The respondent took uh, more than 50% of the funds and did not complete the work. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. The Palmers did send a certified demand letter uh, for construction defects and proof of insurance. And there was no um, permits issued or inspections performed on the project. Code section 1837D9J, the contract did not contain the proper language regarding the recovery fund, construction recovery fund. Ms. Palmer, you can, it's your turn to address the board. All right, thank you. Good morning, my name is Nicole Palmer. In August of 2021, my husband and I contacted Matthew Banks with Banks Construction regarding a extensive remodel on our home. It was going to include three exterior um, remodel, as well as only flooring in our home, a laundry room, a bathroom, and an upstairs remodel. We discussed during this initial meeting the timeliness of this project because we intended to live in the home <laughs> during the project. Mr. Banks represented to us that it would take minimum of six weeks and that he could start the project in November if we signed a contract with him. As a result, on September 10, 2021, we signed a contract with Mr. Banks for a total of $72,800 pursuant to the contract. Uh, renovations were supposed to start on November 22, 2021. The contract also required a 50% down payment of $36,400, which we tendered that day on September 10, 2021, and Mr. Banks endorsed and deposited. November came and went and no work was performed between November 2021 and February 2022. No work was performed. I continued to call almost weekly. By January 2022, I was calling multiple times a week as to the status of when they would begin the project. On February 5, 2022, my husband then emailed Mr. Banks requesting a refund. Mr. Banks responded, requested a meeting. He met with my husband three days later, provided a schedule saying that it was going to begin. On February 21, Mr. Banks and his employees removed the vinyl siding from three sides of our house and installed some Tyvek. Over a month lapsed and I began becoming very concerned about water intrusion to our house. I emailed Mr. Banks concerned about the installation of the Tyvek. I received excuses as to the delay. Finally, on April 13, I emailed Mr. Banks inquiring as to the status of the project and whether a permit had even been pulled. I got more delays. April 15 was the final date of any work being performed on the house, and that was an upstairs window. Months passed. Finally, on July 11, we requested a return of our funds. We got no response. No work has been performed. We have since had to hire a new contractor. We have learned that the Tyva was installed improperly that because they had removed the vinyl siding and properly installed the Tyvek, we have water intrusion on three sides of our home as well. We have also learned that the window that he installed 
uh, was in violation of Florida Building Code, and we are having to remove that window, buy a new one, and install it in as well. Essentially, Mr. Banks vandalized our home. Um, we're also out the $36,400 and starting anew. As a result, we would request that there is a finding of probable cause. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. This, that concludes staff's presentation of the case. I'll entertain a motion that the evidence presented in this probable cause hearing is sufficient to take the case to disciplinary hearing. I need a motion. Motion to move it to disciplinary hearing. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to take the Matthew Banks complaint 22081272M. That's the wrong one. This one, sir. To take uh, the motion is made to move disciplinary hearing to disciplinary hearing case uh, complaint number 2208123COM to disciplinary hearing. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Big nod. The motion is approved. Yes. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Item 8-4 is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2208127COM. It's in regard to Judith Johnson, the homeowner complainant at 737 Whitney Drive, Pensacola, Florida, in the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent, and as a reminder, Ms. Reber is still sworn in to provide testimony. Is the complainant, Ms. Johnson, present? Is the respondent, Mr. Banks, present? Ms. Johnson, are you going to provide testimony for this case? Just a little. If you could go ahead and be sworn in, please. Thank you. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Uh, yes, there was, August 15th, 2022. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? There was no response. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? Yes, she did and it is attached. Uh, did the respondent provide any supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda? No documentation was provided. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Escambia County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations regarding contractor Matthew Banks, uh, case number 2208127COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Is the motion made, is it seconded? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Mr. Mr. Chair, Carolina. I think he had a seven on that number. It's there. It's just a typo on that sheet, I believe. 220812? Okay. Yeah, it's right. Okay, the second. The motion's second. right for the case number. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to send the probable cause, case number 2208127C0M uh, is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations? And if so, please state each violation and your justification for the, for the violation. Yes, alleged code violations, code section 1837C8. Uh, Banks has uh, abandoned the job and it did not perform any additional work after June 29th, 2022. 
Code Section 1837C11, banks uh, received 50% of the deposit and did not perform sufficient amount of work. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, no permits were applied for the project. The uh, complainant sent a certified demand letter on August 29, 2022. Code Section 1837-D9J, the contract did not contain the proper verbiage advising the owner of the construction recovery fund. Ms. Johnson, it's your opportunity to speak to the board. Good morning. Um, as you've heard from many of the bank's cases, mine's basically the same. We contracted in January for a, an additional bathroom and a demo of the current bathroom updated. And things progressed rather slowly, but I understood construction's a timely process. And finally in May, uh, I got an email, I received an email that they wanted to do a walkthrough so they can set up a schedule for my project. And it was scheduled for May 10th at 9 a.m. and nobody showed up. And I thought, well, there's a red flag right there. But when somebody, I finally got in touch with them and when somebody did show up, I noticed he didn't have any paper or pen, he didn't take notes, he didn't have a camera to take pictures, no measurements, nothing. So I couldn't understand how you could plan something if you didn't know what you were working with. But anyway, after that, they did decide to uh, begin, give me a start date of June 29th. And June 29th came around and I had, didn't hear if, when, who would be there. So I was up early thinking they may be there at 7.30 or so. Well, 7.30, 8, 10, noon, 2.30, one of the employees knocks on my door and says, I'm here to start your demo. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. And so he worked for a couple hours, and then he said he would be back the next day, and he came back and did some more, and that was it. That's all I had done. I got two walls out in my house. Fortunately, I'm not like other people that are really in a bind. I can still live in my house, and everything's the same, but... It's just kind of messy right now, but, um, and my concern is I just want to get a refund and continue on with my project, and that's it. <laughs> Sorry that you had to go through this. Eh, lesson learned. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion that the evidence presented is sufficient to take the case to disciplinary hearing, and that complaint is 2208. 127-COM. I need a motion. Motion to take it to disciplinary hearing. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion to take the disciplinary hearing. Complaint 2208-127-COM is approved. We move to item 8-5. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. 8-5 is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2208132COM. It's in regard to Christopher and Shannon Jones. Uh, homeowner complainants at 1046 Iron Forge Road, Contentment, Florida, 32533. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Is the complainant, Mr. or Mrs. Jones, present? Yes. Thank you. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Yes. Thank you. Is Mr. Banks present? All right. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, if you could please stand and be sworn in. Uh, Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Yes, there was, August 22nd, 2022. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? He did not give a response. 
Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? They did and it is attached. Did the, did the respondent provide any supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Uh, no documentation was provided. Staff would like to request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Schema County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 220811, I mean 32COM. Uh, be entered into evidence for consideration for proper cause. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is approved to take the probable cause case number, or take the disciplinary hearing, or to enter it into evidence for disciplinary hearing. 2208132COM. For probable cause, sir. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations? And if so, please state each violation and your justification for the violation. Yes, I was. Code section 1837C8. There was no work performed on this project after the deposit was given. Code section 1837C11, a deposit of $6,300 was issued on September 17th, 2021. No work ever performed. Code section 1837D9J, the contract did not contain the proper verbiage advising the complainant of the residential contractor recovery fund. Mr. and Ms. Jones, it's your opportunity to address the board. Thank you. So, um, like everybody else, September of last year, we contracted with Matthew Banks for $12,600 for a front door and cabinets in our formal dining room. Um, we asked a kind of a timeline. He told <laughs> us start about November, should take just a week or two to get done. Um, he sent one project manager out to measure um, and that person said they were going to send us designs and it took about a month. We sent an email requesting those designs, got nothing back. Um, so we sent something to Matthew Banks asking, you know, what's going on. He said that person had been fired. So he sent somebody else out. This was in December of some time. Um, that lady measured our house, um, said it'd take three weeks to get designs back. Uh, about four weeks later, she finally sent us something. <laughs> so we said, okay. We went back and forth on approval of these cabinets. That was in January. Um, the cabinets were not in any way cabinets you would expect from any contractor. My <laughs> third grader could have done them. Yeah, so. We were very disappointed with we did not approve those. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it went back and forth for about a month. We finally did approve them. We asked how long it would take to get the cabinets. They said three weeks. So they said they ordered them. And then just months went by. We kept requesting, where's everything at? Where are these cabinets at? And at first, we were getting responses. They were saying, hey, you know, they're on back order. Stuff is, it, it's just behind, you know, it's COVID get a new project manager every couple of months yeah. too. They would also say the previous project manager had been fired, we're having staffing issues, so we're going to assign you a new project manager. That went on for probably three months. Because of the delayed timeline, at one point, I believe it was in February, we said we want to remove the door because we started to, I don't know, feel like something was not right. So we said, you know, we don't want to do the door at this time, just the cabinets. Matthew Banks responded, said he would remove that from the overall amount. We didn't get any refund. They would just take it off the, the amount owed at the, the end of this. Um, well, 
back to the cabinets, we, uh, I think it was like in March, we started asking where, where are our cabinets? This has been delayed. It's, this was supposed to end in, uh, this was supposed to start in November. Here we are in March, nothing's been done. So he, he started saying that we're gonna send weekly updates. Okay. So the next week we do get an update. Hey, the cabinets should be here any week now. And then as soon as they're in, we'll start scheduling. That kind of went on where it, it, it was a little bit more of a custom response for about three weeks. And then it went to just this generic email. We'll update you when they're in. We'll update you when, when they're in. That lasted for another three weeks. And then we said, okay, we can't do this anymore. So we, at that time, requested a formal refund and never got a response. So, and I don't have the dates of when we started, but I asked for at least two different times where I said, I, we just want our money back. We don't want this contract anymore. You guys have not fulfilled any of the promises that you said you were going to do. Um, and he never, he would never respond on that. So no work was ever finished. It was never started. Um, we just took our money and ran. Yeah. Thank you. Question. Staff, would you confirm their last name, please? Jones. Jones, okay. Thank you. I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. No work was done at all? No. So no demolition? No. Nothing? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, so the, the cabinets that they brought was just for like a sample type thing. They didn't have anything to actually install to the house. No, they didn't build anything for your house, per se. I don't think they ever even got gotcha. the gotcha. cabinets, to gotcha. be honest. So yeah, no, we never saw any nothing cabinets. Nothing was put in our home. Gotcha. That concludes staff's presentation of the case. Okay. Uh, due to the evidence in this probable cause case, I make a motion that we go to disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to take the disciplinary hearing for case 220813 2 is approved. Thank you, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Jones. Item 86, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC, state registered license number RR2828-12001. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2208135COM. It's in regard to Matthew and Rachel Conway, homeowner complainants at 9542 Hummingbird Boulevard in Pensacola, Florida 32514. Proper notice was sent to the respondent in regard to the hearing, and as a reminder, Ms. Reber is still sworn in. Is the complainant, Mr. and Mrs. Conway, present? Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Perfect. Mr. Banks, are you present? Mr. Banks is not present. Um, Ms., uh, Mr. and Mrs. Conway, if you could please come and be sworn in. Yes. All right, Ms. Reber. Um, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Yes, there was. The complaint was filed August 12, 2022. Were you able to communicate with the complainants about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? No response was given. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is that documentation attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, they did. And all of their documentation is attached. How about the respondent? Uh, he did not provide any documentation. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scambia County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigation regarding contractor Matthew Banks case number 220-135-COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Motion. Second. 
Set motion made and second. Any further discussion? Big none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion is approved. <coughs> We're entering into probable cause. Case number 2208135COM. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations? And if so, please state each violation and your justification. Yes, I was. Code section 1837C8. Uh, there was, I'm sorry, just one moment. There was no work performed on the project. Code section 1837C11. The Conways provided a $15,800 deposit and uh, additional, I'm sorry, additional payments totaling $30,750 and no work was performed. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, there were no permits applied for for this project by Matt Banks. Code section 1837D9J, the contract did not contain the verbiage for the contractor recovery fund advising the Conways. All right, Mr. and Ms. Conway, it's your opportunity to address the board. All right, thank you. Um, first, I mean, we did have some work performed, just want to make sure that's clear. I'm sorry about that. I see that. Um, so we uh, first contracted with Matt Banks on December of 2020, um, and I, I'm going I try to keep this as brief as possible because our case is pretty consistent with everybody else. We had uh, we were doing a kitchen remodel, a uh, full kitchen remodel with um, opening up our living area to make it make it that open concept. Uh, demolition happened in uh, March of 21, and then that's when the shenanigans started happening. Everything slowed down. Between that time and I think November, we did have some work done, cosmetic things such as we did some flooring, uh, ceiling scraped. Uh, had been done multiple times on the ceiling, some painting because the, the, the work wasn't done properly the first time. November was when we had kitchen cabinets installed um, in, a, in a sink, so we went that long without a functioning kitchen. Um, let's see here, uh, right around February is when we really started, we, we were patient, I mean that's what I like to say, we were patient, it sounds virtuous on our end. Uh, we asked for a completed time frame. When, when we're going to get this done because this was originally quoted as a three-month job um, they provided that to us and um, it was going to be february of this year well that date came and went St still hadn't completed the job we we're waiting on the rest of it was going to be uh, our, a breakfast nook pantry and some some built-ins for our entertainment center um, that was never done. I think the last job, the last work we had was in April of this year. And then, um, well, we actually attended one of these meetings, I believe in June is when we first found out about this and communicated back and forth with uh, Mr. Banks, um, gave us the same kind of response as what we've already heard before. Uh, but, but finally, when I, we asked you know, via text, just say, hey, we know this isn't gonna happen. We'd like our money back. And that's when communication stopped. And that's why we're here today. And the cabinets we did get aren't complete. They were supposed to be painted and they were not. Um, and they didn't put the risers in, didn't put the, right. was it the toe, toe kick? Toe kick. So even what we, did get, what we did get isn't up, up to standards. Um, our sink is being held in by two by fours um, underneath. So, and we got another um, quote from contractors Mm -hmm. So to finish the job, which yeah. would be roughly eighteen thousand dollars. Board, if I may add, I I apologize. All of that documentation is in there. My investigative report does reflect the work. I just skipped the paragraph. There are also, also photos of the project. That concludes Steph's presentation of the case. Okay. I have, I have a question. Um, I was reading through the backup. Did you, did y'all make more than one payment to Mr. Banks? We we did. We made the, the down payment, the original one for contract, and then we made two 
additional payments. One was, can you tell me the amount? I've got it at $5,495.50. Correct. The, 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 the $5,400 was uh, when we decided to do the, the built-in. So he wanted 50% of that. And then the, uh, the approximately $9,000 one was just a, an additional draw. I think that came in July of 21. The no payment since then. Thank you. Mr. Chair, yeah. so you had somebody come look and it be about 18000 to finish. Is that included? I'm assuming what is not properly done needing to be brought up. Is that to, correct? Because right, right now we've got some items that need to be finished. So to, f to finish up the, the finishing pieces in our kitchen and then the, the breakfast nook in the pantry, roughly 18000 That doesn't include the, in the, the built-in shelves with the entertainment system. We've... We're pushing that off because so that does not include, and you gave him a deposit on that. We did, but this eighteen does not include that. That yeah, the, the quote that we got does not include that because so that would be an addition to right. It's just not as important anymore because the budget's a little thin right now. I understand. I'm just we're just trying to figure out numbers of what you've spent and what's let you know. Yes, sir. That makes yes. sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, entertain a motion that the uh, information presented in the probable cause hearing is sufficient to take the uh, complaint to disciplinary hearing. I'll try that this time. <laughs> I move that we take the information submitted to disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is approved to take the, this probable cause information to disciplinary hearing for case 2208135COM. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item 87, Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2208142COM. It's in regard to Carrie Whitlock, the homeowner complainant at 2012 North 19th Avenue, Pensacola, Florida 32503, within the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Is Ms. Whitlock present? All right. Oh, you're right behind Melissa. I couldn't see you. <laughs> Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? All right. Is Mr. Banks present? Mr. Banks is not present. Ms. Whitlock, if you could please stand and be sworn in. And just a reminder, while she's coming up, Melissa Reber is still sworn in. Perfect. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Yes, there was, August 15th of 2022. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Uh, he gave no response. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? Yes, she did, and it is attached to the agenda. And how about the respondent? No documentation provided. At this time, staff would request that documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scambia County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigation regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 2208142COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, evidence will be presented. Will be presented. 
Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the ca this case? And if so, please state each violation and your justification. Um, yes, I was. Code section 1837C8. The contract was signed on February 9th, 2021, and work did not commence until June 23rd, 2021, and there was minimal work done. No further work has been done on the project. Code section 1837C11, Ms. Whitfield made a deposit of $48,225, and there was just minimal work performed for that amount of money. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, Ms. Whitfield sent a certified demand letter to banks on July 15, 2022, uh, requesting a refund plus damages for loss of use. Were any permits obtained? Sorry, uh, there were no permits obtained on the project. Code section 1837D9J, the contract did not contain the verbiage advising Ms. Whitlock of the Residential Property Recovery Fund. Ms. Whitlock, it's your opportunity to address the board. Okay, so I hired Banks Construction um, in February of 2021. Um, all the work was for damage sustained in Hurricane Sally when a tree came through the roof and um, damaged the entire master bedroom of the house and back deck of the house. Um, he told me due to the age of the house that we would start work in June. Um, we were completely on backup generators for power. The water was off. The electricity was frayed. Um, so that was one of the reasons why we couldn't use the power in the house. Um, and he gave me an approximate four week completion of the project and that we would need to be out of the house due to the um, age and the amount of dust and what the project was gonna contain. Um, on, on June 23rd, there was no work done. Um, and then on July 2nd, they came and removed some of the tarping and plywood that was over the roof protecting the house. Um, I called them back just about every single day because they left the tarps and the plywood off of the house, which resulted in significant water damage, and much further water damage to the house and the property. Um, they basically, the same as they've done to just about everyone else, never returned phone calls, new project managers, lack of staff. Um, and then in summer of last year, the house condition just became so bad and the black mold was so bad that we had to move out of the house because it's completely unlivable. Um, we told them that we were moving out. They sent one person back one more day who ended up leaving cigarettes and beer cans in the house um, and not doing any any type of work on it. Um, and just con the same thing that ha has happened to everyone else, continued um, calls, emails, um, what's going on with the project and no response from them. In July of this year, we did file a demand letter requesting the money back um, as well as damages for the house. Um, and that was signed for and there was no communication since. Um, we have gotten a quote to um, one additional thing is they did order trusses from Milton Trust, which were not paid for, and that money is currently in collections right now as well, so there's additional damages from that. Um, and I think that's about it. On the house, we did um, get an additional um, quote to fix the house as well as the water damage and the um, quote that we got is over $130,000 in addition to the money lost from him. So just extreme financial hardship that he's caused for having to move out of the house, still continue to pay the mortgage as well as stealing the, all of this money and now the cost of additional repairs to the house. Thank you for your input. Sorry you have to go through this. Chair, at this time, staff would like to request that 1837C6 be added to the alleged violations, financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting for failure to pay subcontractors for supplies provided. 
Move to accept that recommendation. Motion to add the information. Any discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. Yes, sir. Yes. Opposed? Being none. Second. 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 Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Most is approved. Yeah. That concludes the staff's presentation of the case. Ms. Whitlock, you live in Gainesville, correct? And you have to travel to come to these hearings? As far as the restitution that's involved in this case, um, in the next hearing, I anticipate that the, at the administrative hearing, should the court, should the board decide that it be an administrative hearing, um, you can submit something in writing if you prefer them to travel, um, but they will, should they decide, that um, should they go forward on the disciplinary hearing and find that there's, uh, they'll introduce everything from this hearing. Um, is there, do you have an exact amount on restitution? That, that I requested from him? Yes. Um, the, in the initial demand letter, it was 65,000, but that was prior to some other issues. If you could step up to microphone. I see that you had an attorney. You have an attorney in this, did you have an attorney in this case? Um, just to draft the demand letter. Okay. All right. If you could um, uh, submit a uh, just a, a written form to uh, Investigator Reaver with some information uh, specifying the restitution you're requesting, um, and and um, should the board agree, they could accept that at the next uh, meeting, and then you wouldn't have to travel back from Gainesville. Okay. okay. Thank we don't want to put any more hardship on you than we have to. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes. For, I guess for a legal standpoint, um, does, do we have the ability to help or is this out of the realm of the board is for a contractor's liability insurance to help recommendations or to submit information to them concerning the case? When I understand liability insurance may not cover somebody who never starts to work but once work has started on a home and the situation is here, do we have the ability to forward our findings and so forth to their insurance company to help them? Or is this not something that we're able, where's our line there is my question. So from previous cases that have come before the, this board in regard to Matt Banks, some of those property owners have filed claims against his insurance. And I, I, as I recall, it didn't really pan out for them. We do have his insurance information on file with the licensing division. However, that insurance is expired with our department and has been since March of this year. We do not have updated insurance for him. So if anybody would like to have that document, they can, of course, talk to me or Ms. Reber about obtaining that information and then they would, could possibly file a claim against the insurance. My understanding is the insurance is still valid until the day it's canceled. So even though it may be canceled now, if it was valid during the time that their home was, and I'm just, you know, to help these folks, is there a way we can make sure we submit information or make it available? I guess you answer it, just let them call you about the gotcha. Yes, sir. They can definitely get with me or Ms. Reber and we can provide them with a copy of that the, the certificate of insurance. Thank you. But the homeowner would still have to right, right. file for the... We just make sure we make the information available yeah. for, for those purposes. And the attorney that assisted you with the, the letter, you may want to reach out to him. It's, it's a male. I'm saying him. Uh, the per attorney that assisted you, you may want to reach out to him with that information um, when you request it. It's also very cost prohibitive to retain an attorney and what a lot of them are saying is that there's just not going to be any money there that they'll take the case but you're just going to throw good money after bad right but yeah. mr lister i'll add i've had a couple of people um, who have obtained that information and spoke with his insurance company and they were denying um, however i did take a complaint yesterday and that property owner um, 
in coordination with her, uh, excuse me, her own homeowner's insurance is being a little more vigilant and they are trying to go after his insurance stating that it was the insurance. Uh, the insurance does need to cover that. But um, you are a uh, claimant in his bankruptcy as well. I think we discussed that just, we discussed that though, correct? Okay, just making sure. Um, when there's bankruptcies, there are deadlines, so you want to make sure that you get that information. Even if you don't get an order from this board, you want to make sure you get in touch with that trustee and we have that information. It, it doesn't make any promises, um, but that's certainly something anyone who wanted to um, be sure that they're involved in that bankruptcy, that they need to reach out to the bankruptcy trustee and give them their information. Okay. okay. Thank you. And there are deadlines and they're approaching. Okay. We need a motion, sir. Have we entered this into evidence? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, good deal. Entertain a motion that the information presented in the probable cause hearing is sufficient to take the complaint to disciplinary hearing. I make a motion to move it to disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being done, the motion to take the disciplinary hearing case complaint number 2208142COM to disciplinary hearing is approved. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We will now move into our section of disciplinary hearings. If you want, we can take a, a short break. Break, yeah. I'll, I'll, Secretary, I'm going to impose a five minute break. Yes. Um, if you're in the audience for the, because your case came for probable cause, you're not required to stay. You feel free to leave unless you would like to see the outcomes of the disciplinary hearings. And when they send us the ones that went to disciplinary, will you guys send us a letter telling us the meeting? Oh, yes, ma'am. I'll start drafting those probably this afternoon in hopes to get y'all on the November 2nd um, board meeting date. That will be an all-day event for this board, and we're trying to get all of this done expeditiously for you guys. We're temporary adjournment for five minutes.
We're back in session. I'll entertain a motion that in the disciplinary hearings, all items, all items pertaining to Matthew Banks be put in sequence at the beginning of the disciplinary hearing and all items for a reference Jesse Lacoste be attached at the end of the sequence. So that's a modification to the agenda. Yes. So what you're wanting is instead of bouncing back and forth between the two contractors, we'll take one series of contractors that's and then the correct. second series. That of is correct. Yes, sir. Motion to modify the agenda. Motion, motion made and seconded. In the discussion, being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The agenda is modified. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, before we get into our disciplinary hearings, we had a late attendee to the audience and he would like to address the board. Um, he missed public forum. Okay. Mr. Larry Downs, Jr. We have three minutes, is that right? Yes, sir. Seven. Seven's my lucky number. Hello, board. Larry Downs, Jr., 12156 Habberg Drive, Pensacola, Florida. And I just wanted to let you board members know that uh, our county commissioners kind of threw y'all under the bus, so to speak. You know, all of us, but, you know, y'all too. And uh, I'm going to go to the county commission meeting tomorrow evening and speak at the public forum on recusals and appropriate recusals, meaning... Uh, meaning a even a, a appearance of a conflict of interest or appearance of a impropriety or you know make sure proceeding forward that you don't let these county commissioners dictate and and kind of uh, you know use use the media channel three you know or their or their uh, you know bully pulpit to tell y'all when to recuse yourself and when not. That's, you know, that's part of the reason why there's, uh, you know, nine board members. There's plenty to do it. Now, these county commissioners recuse themselves for less than what I recuse myself for. Less. Less of a conflict. Less of, a, uh, of doing work, including Stephen Barry, after lecturing us. So make sure you don't let them push you all around because what a couple of contractors did which we all know is, is, is pretty despicable. But regardless of that, that doesn't have nothing to do with y'all doing your job representing the citizens, all the citizens. So anyways, I just wanted to come up here. I'm surprised that they didn't kick me off sooner. <laughs> Three and a half years was a good little run. And uh, I figured I wouldn't last six months because they don't like me. They don't like my ideology my public position or my political incorrectness but you know they they had to find some reason to throw me off and they mentioned all the reasons that they didn't throw me off for <laughs> which is technically the reason they did so good luck gentlemen thank Adios. you larry thank you welcome larry we move into the first of the matthew banks disciplinary yes sir mr chairman Item 9-1, Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor competency board complaint number 220679COM. It's in regard to Trevor Gaiman, homeowner complainant at 3855 Kingsbury Drive, Pensacola, Florida. This is in the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Is the complainant present? Thank you. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Okay. Is the respondent, Mr. Banks, present? Mr. Banks is not present. Uh, Mr. Gaiman, if you could come up and be, please be sworn in. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber is already sworn in to provide testimony. At this time, staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on August 3rd, right? Sorry, I didn't have that right in front of me. Hang on.
One moment, please. I apologize that yes, on August 3rd, um, 2022 be moved into evidence. This one here, sure. Um, I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scamma County bid staff concerning contractor comp board complaints and investigations and previous probable calls testimony as found in the official record transcript regarding contractor Matthew Banks case number 220679COM be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion is approved. Ms. Reaver, was, was there any additional information after the probable cause hearing as far as documentation provided for this case? No, there was not. Thank you. Um, if you would like to go ahead and speak to the um, alleged violations within the administrative complaint, this is your opportunity to address the board. Um, okay. Is there anything in particular you want to know in addition to uh, what was already gone over? Do I need to rehash the whole No, timeline? we don't okay. need to rehash. Okay, great. <clears throat> no, sir, if you would like to go ahead and just address maybe your restitution request. Yeah, I would just like um, everything I paid to Matt Banks to be returned. It's, I paid him $14,875. All I have is a, a slab that was poured incorrectly without permits, drains improperly, I can't build on it, I have to pay to remove it now. So I'm kind of in the hole. So really I just would request that he just give back uh, down the, 35% down payment that I paid to him. Okay. Okay. At this time, uh, we are going to go ahead and go through the counts. Um, at the probable cause hearing, the board determined that uh, there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837 D8, Code Section 1837 D9J, Code Section 1837 D9H, and code section 1837 D15C. So for count one, code section 1837 D98, does the board feel that the respondent is in violation of mismanagement or misconduct causing financial harm to the customer? Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to find him guilty. Uh, question, is this second offense? I'm sure. Yes, this would okay. be a, a repeat violation. <clears throat> okay, a $5,000 fine and revocation. So, on count one. Second. Motion made and seconded for count one. And that is uh, Escambia County Code Section 1837, parent D, parent 8. A $5,000 fine and revocation of his license. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion's approved. As to count two, 1837 D9J. Does this board find the respondent in violation of failure to notify the residential property owner of the recovery fund? And this is a repeat violation. Motion to find guilty on count two, a thousand dollar fine. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. The motion for count two is approved. As to count three, 
Code section 1837D9H, does this board find the respondent in violation of failure to supervise construction activities? Motion to find guilty of $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion for count three is approved. $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count four, code section 1837D15C, does this board find a respondent in violation of the job being finished without a permit having been pulled, no permit until caught after job, or late permit during the job resulting in missed inspection or inspections? Motion to find guilty on count four, $1,500 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being done, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. The motion for count four is approved. One $1,500 fine and revocation. At this time, the board would need to make a determination in regard to restitution for the complainant. <clears throat> Entertain a motion for restitution. A motion that we approve for restitution in the amount of $14,875 to the complainant with the additional option for demo of damaged work. A second. Would you clarify that motion? I'm giving him the option of adding to that any amount that's required to tear out what's not usable. I mean, this is expenses that. Yeah, sure. Great. I don't know how much that would cost, though. So what, what he's asking in his motion is that um, as to that matter, the board retain jurisdiction should you get a calculation that you want to come back to the yeah. board for restitution on that number. Okay. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Does everybody understand? The restitution initially of fourteen thousand eight seventy-five plus any additional that he can produce as a result of the damage. Right. It would allow the individual to come back. And yes. You would be he able to come, come back, back at a future time. Allow you to come back. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. All right. Opposed like sign. The motions are approved on restitution. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Chair, we also have to submit a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. Entertain a motion to send the Industry Licensing Board as results of this disciplinary hearing. Up on your screen. Are your options for what you can recommend to the CILB? It is the last sentence in that paragraph. I make a motion that we send a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board, uh, basically equal to what we imposed here, which would be uh, revocation and the uh, and the fine and the appropriate fines and the fine was finished. <clears throat> that's is there that's a second? my motion. Second. Motion made seconded. Any further discussion? Being done, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion passes. Send the recommendation to the uh, construction industry licensing board as presented. Is approved. Thank you, Chair. We will now move on to item four, keeping in line with uh, attending to all of Matt, Mr. Banks's cases. Uh, item four, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, state registered license number RR2828120001, 
Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 220669. It's in regard to Lori Jones, the homeowner complainant at 409 Bremen Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Is the complainant, Ms. Jones, present today? And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is Mr. Banks present? No, ma'am. Mr. Banks is not present. Uh, Ms. Jones, if you could please stand and be sworn in. And as a reminder, Ms. Reber has already been sworn in. Thank you. At this time, staff will request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on August 3rd be moved into evidence. Yes, ma'am. Okay, during my probable cause, there was mention in there that I signed a contract with Matthew Banks. I did not. You were, you're um, talking I about the investigation the notes from, yes. from Ms. Reber? Yes, that was. That's corrected. Can I, can I hear how it now reads? It was her husband that signed oh, um, the documents. Mm -hmm. Correct. I went by, she only put her name on the, co on the complaint, and that's how I address it. But that is correct. I think it's in the evidence. Okay, because my contract should be in there and everything should be in there. But since I did not get my records request timely, I was not able to read that and make sure that it is now correct. So I want that noted on the record. Okay, let's make sure we get that right. Okay. Do I need to stay or go? So part of this disciplinary hearing, they will move into evidence the transcript from the last mm -hmm. that that meeting mm -hmm. all right we're gonna read it again no it will not be read and it and, and it was corrected basis. in that testimony provided at the probable cause hearing mm -hmm. okay you want me to stay here or go back and do your day you can stay there okay I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Skema County bid staff concerning contractor Compsy board complaints and investigation and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official record transcript regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 220669COM be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved. Ms. Jones, now is your opportunity to address the violations that were in the administrative complaint. My violations are very simple. Matthew Banks agreed, provided me a quote and agreed to repair my house for two times $21,175. I gave him $21,175 in the form of a check, which he promptly cashed and has never returned. He had a few people come out, same story. Y'all could write a book about it. They come out, they tell you, you got a new project manager. Now it's a Lacoste. Tomorrow it's another person. Now we got another Lacoste back on board. Over and over, same different day. Until somehow I realized that people were coming to you guys about this and you guys weren't doing anything at that point yet. And I'm already 13 months into a contract with nothing started and black mold building up in my house, which I promptly took care of myself eventually because nothing has been done. And I am asking, first of all, I'm asking that you give me my restitution before you give him his fines as Santa Rosa County did because why are you lining your pocketbooks at Scambia County 
when you can go ahead and impose my restitution first. Because from what I understand, if there's a bankruptcy case going on, those fines can go right on in that bankruptcy case and cut down on any amount of money that victims may be due. Did you guys know that was possible? At the September 7th hearing that came before this board, that was a motion made and approved that all restitution would be received by the complainants prior to this board receiving any monies. Including any potential restitution that may already be out there? That can be pulled back now? I'm just asking. The bankruptcy court will make all decisions as to what happens to the restitution. All this board can do is enter it. We're under a stay and cannot enforce it. So that's the extent of our involvement with the restitution and the bankruptcy. So by law, am I understanding correctly that you all could table fines while we seek restitution? This board has made the decision that they would ask for restitution to be reimbursed before fines. Okay. That's been their decision. Thank you very much for that clarification on the record. Um, otherwise, the only thing I'm asking for now is my money back so that I can pay back the federal government because that's what I do. I pay my bills and I try to stand up to what the heck ever I tell somebody I'm going to do. So I'm asking for restitution, full restitution, in the amount of $21,175 from Banks Construction. Thank you. All right, Chair. So the board determined at the probable cause hearing that there was probable cause hearing to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C5, Code Section 1837D9J, Code Section 1837D10, Code Section 1837D12B, and Florida Statute 49126-2A1. So as to count one, does this board, um, does this board believe that the respondent is in violation of diversion of funds or property received for prosecution or completion of a particular construction project or operation by the contractor when as a result of such diversion, the contractor is or will be unable to fulfill the terms of his obligations or contract. This is not a repeat violation. Count one, uh, find him guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Uh, it doesn't do revocation. That's $5,000 fine. fine. Second. It, it actually references any other such penalty as provided within Scambia County Code Section 1837. So it does include suspension, revocation, probation, all of those items. So $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The motion for uh, guilty of count one, $5,000 fine, and revocation of his license is approved. As to count two, does this board believe that the respondent is in violation of failure to notify residential property owner of the recovery fund? This is a repeat violation. Motion to find the guilty on count two thousand dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion guilty. Count two with a thousand dollar fine is approved. As to count three, does this board feel that the respondent is in violation of Abandonment. This would Motion. be a first violation for this count. Motion find guilty on count three, uh, five thousand dollar fine and revocation. This, you said it was not. This a is repeat. a first violation a first for this first, specified sorry, count. Right. Uh, Two thousand dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. And if all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is approved for count three, 
$2,000 fine. As to count four, this is board feel that the respondent is in violation of committing fraud or deceit in the practice of contracting, causing monetary or other harm to a licensee's customer or physical harm to any person. This is a repeat violation. Motion found guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being done. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion for count five, four is approved. $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count five, does this board believe that the respondent is in violation of Florida Statute 49-126-2A1, a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made. This is a repeat violation. Motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion is approved. Guilty of count five. Five thousand dollar fine and revocation. At this time, uh, the complainant, Ms. Jones, has made a request for restitution and the board will need to make a determination. Her request as she stated earlier, it was $21,175. Entertain a motion to provide restitution of $21,500? $21,175. Is there a motion? I move that we order the restitution amount of $21,175 back to the owner complainant. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for restitution of $21,175 is approved. At this time, the board would need to make a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. I move the board. Uh, recommend to the construction industry licensing board um, the revocation and fines and restitution found here today. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for to advise the uh, Construction Industry Licensing Board of the fine revocation and restitution is approved. Thank you. We will now move into item 9-5. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 220676COM. It's in regard to Russell and Janeth Bondurant, the homeowner complainants at 2501 Sweetheart Lane in Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Is the complainant, Mr. or Mrs. Bondurant, present? Yes. Thank you. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Yes. Thank you. Is Mr. Banks present? Mr. Banks is not present. Um, it, Ms. Bondurant, if you could please stand and, and be sworn in. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber is already sworn in. Um, at this time, staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on, let me see, just one shake. Because we had two 
probable cause hearing dates into this one. On August 3rd, 2022, be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Escambia County bid staff concerning contractor compensation board complaints and investigation and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official record transcript regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 220676COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved for evidence Ms. Reber, for consideration. Did, thank you. Ms. Reber, did you receive any additional documentation that you have added as backup to this agenda? No, all documentation is in the record. Thank you. Ms. Bondurant, this is your opportunity to speak to the alleged violations within the administrative complaint. Okay, um, I'll start with, um, good, good, after, good morning or good afternoon. I'll start with um, count one. Do I start there? Because you already have the counts on here. You have three counts. Yes, ma'am. You can just address each one and then also any restitution requests that you would make. Okay, um, regarding count one, Escambia County Code Section 1837C5, the board did not find evidence to support this count of diversion of funds or property received for prosecution or completion of a particular construction project or operation by the contractor when as a result of such diversion, the contractor is, is or will be unable to fulfill his terms of his obligations or contract. I think count one should be reinstated because Banks had over 15 months to fulfill his obligations and plenty of our money when he requested it. He did not fulfill his obligations on our contract. We called and emailed him several times for face-to-face -face, for face-to-face -face closeout starting 13 July 2021 to move on from him and he replied with family issues family excuses and never met with us there was never any documentation terminating our contract therefore he was still obligated in addition to the only two violations you found him guilty of I find I found four additional code violations that I think should be supported in my case Code Section 1837C6, financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to, customer, to a customer. I addressed this board on 7 July 2021, and I told you I moved out of the home for three months, which caused financial hardship during this renovation. Additionally, when banks decided that he was not going to continue with our contract, there was $25,350 left on it. We had to hire other contractors in October 2021 for the unfinished contracted projects as stated in 23K on the administrative complaint, which exceeded the remaining budget by 13,150, which is the amount of restitution that I'm still requesting from my probable cause hearing on 3 August, 2022. Code section 1837C8, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days. If the contractor terminates said project without notification to the pr prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment, we have no agreed documentation that we parted ways. Our first email to meet with banks is dated 13 July 2021 and stated renovation meeting for possible closeout. However, banks avoided meeting with us several times and then we finally and then he finally stopped communicating with us regarding the closeout. Because he was only 40% complete and I have photos, I sent him a sworn statement of account on 13 July 2021. In doing so, he told the Escambia County Inspector that he was not going to go forth with our kitchen and the remaining items in our contract. However, he swore in the statement of account to the Department of Business and Professional Relations that he was finished with the addition and renovation and will be completing the kitchen and remaining items in the contract. Code section 1837C11, code violation and finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit of gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Bank, subcontract, bank subcontractors were incompetent with consistent rework and failed inspections that are on record at this office. Code section 1837D14, code violation 
and being found guilty of gross negligence, repeated negligence, or negligence resulting in significant danger to the life or property, life or property. This was overlooked, but supports no, number nine on the administrative complaint, where I said three quarter inches of the concrete that was poured was poured too high. In August 2020, this is this is a piece of the concrete slab that was poured for 24 by 18 foot addition. The concrete was poured one and a half inches too high instead of three quarter inches. Therefore, the entire area had to be jackhammered and leveled. This three week process exposed my husband and, I, my, and myself to concrete dust and debris throughout the vents from the addition throughout our entire home. I called Banks Construction several times and they did nothing. So my husband and I sealed the vents in the addition with, car, with cardboard and duct tape, which I also have um, pictures of. I'm sure there are many other violations found in the Escambia Code Section 1837 supporting my case, but this has now turned into an assembly line where a few violations were thrown on here to appease me. Thank you. Any questions? Ms. Bonderon, if you could please address any restitution requests. Yes, the restitution, the amount was 13000 $13,150 because we had to have someone renovate our entire kitchen, do our floor throughout the entire house, and repaint it throughout the entire house. Thank you. All right. So at the, um, at the probable cause hearing, um, the board found that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated a scheme, uh, code section 1837C5, code section 1837D9J, and code section 1837D15A. So for count one, um, code section 1837C5, it, it specifically speaks to diversion of funds or property received for prosecution or completion of a particular construction project or operation by the contractor when as the result of such diversion the contractor is or will be unable to fulfill the terms of his obligations or contract. When we reviewed this complaint, I mean for this particular code section, diversion of funds, um, that means that he accepted her funds and did not utilize those funds for her project. Within the backup documentation and during the investigation, Ms. Reber provided testimony that at some point there was an agreement or Ms. Bondurant agreed that what she had paid in for this uh, project was equivalent to the work that was received by Mr. Banks. Um, Ms. Reber, if you'd like to expound on that. Um, during the investigation, uh, and originally when Ms. Bondurant complained, um, it was taking time, um, dr dragging out for the addition to her home, to the master bath and bedroom. Um, all of that work was eventually completed. Um, it was permitted. It passed inspection. Um, although I believe that Mr. Banks had asked her to empty her cabinetry and get ready to do the rest of the work. Um, no other work commenced. He didn't tear down anything in the kitchen. He didn't, you know, go out into the rest of the home and do anything. Therefore, um, it appeared that what Miss Bondurat paid him for, she got those services. Um, I don't know that there was any official that they were canceling the contract. Um, Mr. Banks had stated that she had begun to file complaints. He just wasn't doing any more work for her. Um, the rest of the work also would, wouldn't have been any permitted work, um, cabinetry, flooring, and painting. Um, so we based it on, he, he passed all of those inspections even though it was a rough and bumpy ride. He did. She never terminated him from her project. And that's what we had to base it on. May I say something? Um, Melissa is correct. Um, Matthew, he did have someone tear into our kitchen to begin building the pantry. 
That's where he stopped. He put shells in there. He tore um, about um, a foot of wall next to our stove, exposing all the wires and um, I guess drywall. So he did begin renovating our kitchen, but that's where he walked. He just stopped and never came back after he put the shelves in the pantry. And she is correct about that. Um, that area was specifically looked at by the inspector when he came to do the final inspection for the room. And it was his determination that, you know, it, it wasn't anything that would have um, required that he was out of scope. Uh, although it was left like that, but. For the boards, um, just, for, just to assist the board, any um, evidence that you took in today can also be considered in a determination as to count one. Um, it doesn't just have to rely on Ms. Reaver's investigation. You could, you could base it on the evidence that was presented by Ms. Bondrant in the form of sworn testimony. So that's a decision that the board has to decide is the weight to give the evidence. The key, anyway. we have to, the key we have to focus on is diversion of funds. Were any funds diverted as a result of that? Well, he did purchase a house a block from where I live. If, if that's what diversion of funds, I mean, that's where funds went. The payment was for the work done. But he didn't finish our home. I don't know if I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm misunderstanding what you're saying. Okay. Um, does this mean that you're not okay. going to reinstate count one? Well, Ms. Bondurant, I know that you had expressed um, there was workers down on the home. I wasn't assuming that he was flipping that home, all of that. We just don't have any evidence presented that he was using your project money to work okay. on that home. You know, obviously your project was slow. It was, you know, aggravating to see him having his workers down there, but we could make no connection that your funds were supporting that project. Of course, of course not, okay. That's the reason for our decision on count one. Okay, but I submitted some other counts too that I think should be. Well, we hadn't talked about that. We're talking about count one. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's go to count one. Count one is uh, entertain a motion to dismiss count one for disciplinary here. Motion on count one to find not guilty. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Aye. Motion. I got one. Got one. Motion passes. As to count two. Does the board believe that the respondent is in violation of failure to notify the residential property owner of the recovery fund? This would be a repeat violation. Uh, motion to find guilty, a uh, $1,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion, $1,000 fine, is approved for count two. As to count <clears throat> three, does this board feel that the respondent is in violation of 1837D15A, late per permits? The contractor pulled permit after starting the job, but prior to completion, of the same and did not miss inspections. For this one, this would be a first violation before this board. Motion to find guilty, thousand dollar fine. It's a first you violation. You said first sir. violation. Oh, I'm sorry, first violation. Um, hundred dollar fine. Motion. Motion. Yeah. Is it second? Yeah. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. like, sign. 
Being none, the motion passes for a $1,000 fine count. No, $100 fine for count. Should be a thousand. Yeah, you can't. Is there any more? Chairperson Matthews, she did bring up some other items that she had concerns about and she thought that the board should look into um, for, for reasons of, um, as possible violations. Um, I didn't get a list of fully what she wanted. If we, if we were to go back to that, um, the board would have to go, I'm not sure how the board ruled on it the first time as to these other violations she mentioned, um, but if we wanted to consider those, that would have to go back through the probable cause process and the notice process and the investigation process to get back to here because the individual, um, the respondent has a right to be noticed on what the um, disciplinary hearing charges would be. I understand. So that's, that's up to the board and you'd have to make that decision whether or not you wanted to review those for probable cause at a future date. Question, would that uh, require additional um, evidence supporting that argument for those that's not already on file? Yes. So this, this particular case has already went through probable cause and the board did not at that time determine that there was a possible violation of those um, ordinances that Ms. Bondurant cited. So if it were to have to go back to that beginning process again, Ms. Bondurant would have to provide, <clears throat> I apologize, justification for those. I have, I've been coming here since, um, I reached out since February 2020, 2021, and I provided photos, emails, and pictures. Well, photos and pictures of everything that I'm stating. I've, I have emails, so we have, we have to go through this process again, and I'm yes. resubmitting the information, and that's what I'll do. Okay. But everything is on, is on file. Go ahead. Um, so Ms. Bonderant has put in a request for restitution um, and at that time, she said it was in the amount of $13,150. Um, is that your calculation for all monies owed by Mr. Banks? That's correct. Do we want to solve that issue without addressing the other one, taking it back to probable cause? So my thought process is if the, if the goal of this board is to get restitution for these homeowners, bringing this back to probable cause would not result in additional restitution. It would result in more disciplinary action, meaning fines or further revocation of license. Um, and, and we've heard earlier today that the goal is to, to get these homeowners taken care of. So it's at the board's discretion if they want to bring this whole thing back and, do, and go through that again. Um, but Ms. Bondurant did put in a request for restitution right. in the amount of $13,150. If the board wants to entertain that today um, and go ahead and do the order for the restitution, um, if there were additional monies that she um, came up with later and she brought... In well, the she case could still do that anyway. She could just bring it back later, but it does take care of it now and she yeah. would have her order now on the restitution and that should also um, but the restitution is something that could be added later <clears throat> right but if it if it turns out that the evidence isn't there then then it doesn't get to disciplinary hearing so i would go ahead i would recommend that you go ahead and settle the restitution today and then if she has di additional charges that she wants them the board to look at then look at that the next time but go ahead and let her have her restitution okay. order Entertain a motion to uh, approve the restitution request. A motion that we rule for restitution in the amount of thirteen thousand one hundred and fifty dollars in the complaint number two two zero six seven six C O M Bond Durant. Second. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for restitution of $13,150 for case 2206760M is approved. 
Now then, we'll address the issue of whether we take this back to probable cause. It requires us to complete, do another. That's something I would leave to the investigator to look into further now that she has new transcript and possibly new information and see if there's any additional documentation and then just let it put, go back through the process um, and then be brought to the board because you don't have to make the, you can ask there be further investigation if you, if, if, uh, for the purposes of, to see if there is probable cause. She can actually go back to the staff with a request without coming to us. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. So we don't need a motion on that. Okay. That's up to you. All right. I'll just um, contact. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Chair, we need a recommendation to the CILB for this case. Entertain a motion for the uh, notice for the con construction industry licensing board for this case. I submit that there's probably no further action at this time. Well, so this your recommendation is, is in regard to this case of what action the CILB should take for these counts and for I would remind the board um, it is based on communications previous with the um, DBPR that if you make no recommendation they'll take no action um, so this is the time to take to make the recommendation and then um, if additional additional evidence comes forward and you want them to take more action you can always that ask for that again okay I'll move, I'll move the board um, make a recommendation to the construction industry licensing board that includes a fine at this time um, second okay motion made and seconded any further discussion being none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed like sign being none, the motion for the recommendation of the licensing board is approved. All right, we'll move to the next item. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor competency board complaint number 220678. COM. It's in regard to Christopher Welch, homeowner complainant at 4027 Erica Court, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Welch, are you present today? Thank you, sir. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Mr. Banks, are you present? Again, Mr. Banks is not present. Reminder, Ms. Reber is sworn in already. Mr. Welch, if you could please be sworn in. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. At this time, staff will request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on August 30, I mean August 3rd, 2022, be moved into evidence. Right. Right. Oh. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Schema County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations at previous probable cause testimony as found in the official record transcript regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 220678COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion passes for entering the evidence for today's hearing. Ms. Reber, did you receive any additional documentation that would be attached to the agenda today? Yes, I did. I received information on a request for restitution that was added to today's agenda. Staff would request that the additional documentation attached to the agenda as backup today be moved into evidence. Again. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to add the evidence is approved. Mr. Welch, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the violations within the administrative complaint. Um, like I said, we hired him to do the work. We you know we pursued him, we asked him questions, when are you going to do the work? We seem to always be put on the back burner. Oh, I got people working on it. You know, they started in November. Of, we um, signed the contract in August. His guys came out in November and they broke ground. And then I didn't see them until about, I guess, January when we signed the letter of commencement. And then they pulled a permit. And then um, the people came out and did the foundation work, but they put, did the footers, but they didn't lay the slab. So we waited and waited, still nothing. So we ended the contract and we hired a new contractor. And he said, well, the work they had did was like $4,550. My new contractors, I have a new slab. My, um, my trusses are there at the house. My, um, my, found, my, uh, my other, uh, my trusses are there and then my, um, I can't even think of the word now. But they've got all the wood there, so they're going to start framing towards the end of the week, so I'm happy for that. I just need to get my um, restitution back so I can still move forward. Thank you. Sorry you have to go through this. Now it is sometime. You know, you can't blame y'all. You know, there's crooks out there and people who want to game the system. Mr. Welch, if you could please give them the number for your restitution amount. Uh, the restitution amount is $20,850. Thank you. All right, so at the probable cause hearing, the board found that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated. You can sit down if you want to. I can wait if you have any questions. Okay. <laughs> Co code section 1837C5, code section 1837D8, code section 1837D9H, code section 1837D9J, and code section 1837D15C. As to count one, does the board believe that the respondent is in violation of diversion of funds or property received for prosecution or completion of a particular construction project or operation by the contractor when as a result of such diversion the contractor is or will be unable to fulfill the terms or of his obligations or contract? Motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine. Second. Count one. Mm -hmm. Motion made and seconded. Any additional comments? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for count one is approved with a $5,000 fine. As to count two, does this board find the respondent in violation of mismanagement or misconduct causing financial harm to the customer? Motion. Motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Count two. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion's approved. Guilty, count two, and a $5,000 fine and revocation of license. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of failure to supervise construction activities? This would be a first violation. At this hearing, this was the first time that this came up. Count three, uh, find him guilty, uh, $1,000 fine. Most is in both guilty. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. 
Being none, the motion for count three is guilty with a $1,000 fine. As to count four, does this board find the respondent in validation of failure to notify residential property owner of the recovery fund? This is a repeat violation. A motion to find him guilty, $1,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion's approved. Guilty with a thousand dollar fine. As to count five, does the board find the respondent in violation of job finished without have a permit having been pulled or no permit until caught after job or late permit during the job mm -hmm. resulting in missed inspection or inspections? For this one, it would be a first violation. A motion to find guilty, $1,500 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion count five is guilty with a $1,500 fine is approved. <laughs> Mr. Welch has requested restitution in the amount of $20,850. Entertain a motion. Entertain a motion for restitution. I'll make a motion that we uh, order the restitution amount of $20,850 back to the uh, owner. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion ordering restitution of $20,850 is approved. At this time, the board would also need a recommendation for the Construction Industry Licensing Board. Entertain a motion for recommendation of the Licensing Board. I make a motion that um, our board make a recommendation to this Construction Industry Licensing Board that includes a uh, fine and uh, permanent revocation of his license. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Aye. Being none, the motion recommend to the licensing board a fine and permanent revocation is approved. Thank That's you. it. All right, thank you. Y'all have thank a nice you. day. Roll tight. Bye. Now we are going to move down to item 12. Keeping in line with keeping all of the Banks cases together. This item is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 220683COM. It's in regard to Marla Benjamin, the homeowner complainant at 1488 Knollwood Drive, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Ms. Benjamin, are you present today? Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Banks, are you present? Mr. Banks is not present. Ms. Benjamin, if you, and as a reminder, Ms. Reber has already been sworn in. Ms. Benjamin, if you could please come, be sworn in. Staff would like to request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 7th, 2022 be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scamby County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigation and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorded transcript regarding contractor Matthew Banks Case number 220683COM be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to enter the evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, did you receive any additional documentation? 
And if so, is it attached to the agenda as backup? I didn't receive any additional documentation. Ms. Benjamin, it is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the violations within the administrative complaint. I'm not going to rehash everything we did in the competency board. I'm just going to add a few things. Um, for one, he did not pay subcontractors. I had Milton Trust threaten to put a lien on my house because he had because they had not been paid. Um, the work performed was performed without a permit. It had already expired when he started building the walls. Uh, my present contractor had to demo what work he did do because it was weathered um, black with mold. And the slab I'm going to have to have uh, uh, looked at because it has cracks. One of the floors has cracks and the porch has cracks. So I may have to demo all that. So I am asking for restitution of $45,000, which I had paid him, plus possible demo of the slab and demo of the walls that he had put up. Thank you very much. Ms. Benjamin, are you yes. requesting restitution from this board? I am. What is the amount? $45,000. You didn't get an estimate on the demo stuff yet? No, because I don't know. Well, the, uh, the demo for the walls, I've already, I've already have them demoed. Uh, and what was the cost on that? cost was $8,152.46. Was that included in your $45,000 request? No, it is not. $45,000 is what I paid banks. Everything else is over and above. So that your total request would be for $53,152.46. At this point, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Unless the slab has to be demoed. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. At the probable cause hearing, the board found that there was probable cause to believe the respondent violated Code Section 1837C6, Code Section 1837C8, Code Section 1837D9J, Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, Code Section 1837D3A, and Code Section 1837 D4. As to Count 1, does the Board find the respondent in violation of financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to the customer? Motion to find them guilty of Count 1, $5,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being on all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, being none, <coughs> count one motion is approved for a $5,000 fine. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to this prospective owner and without just cause for the abandonment? Motion find guilty of count two, $5,000 fine. Second. And, uh, and, res revocation. and, and revocation. Yes. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for guilty of count two with a $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of failure to notify the residential property owner of the recovery fund? 
repeat violation. Motion to find guilty count three, a thousand dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motions approved for count three and a thousand dollar fine. Count four, does the board find the respondent in violation of 1837 D13 C2, referencing Florida statute 489-126-2A1? This would be a repeat violation. Motion to find guilty, um, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion for count four with a $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count five, does the board find the respondent in violation of fraud, deceit, misleading, or untrue repre representations? This would be a first violation for this particular ordinance. Motion to find guilty, $5,000 fine and revocation. So, oh, was it first? It's first. 3, 000, yeah. On count five, $3,000 fine. And revocation. And revocation. Second. Thank Motion you. made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for count five is approved with $3,000 fine and revocation. As to count six, does the board find the respondent in violation of state or local building codes or laws? And the board reference this for failing to obtain inspections for work performed. Uh, count six, motion to find them guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. This one would be a first violation, oh, sir, I, I apologize. Twelve, $12,000, a $1,250 <laughs> fine. For count six. Is there a second? Is it on? Yeah. We put revocation on it. I don't think you can put revocation on okay. All right. Second. Motion's made. Seconded for $1,250 fine for count six. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. Count six motion is approved with a $1,250 fine. At this time, the uh, complainant put in a request for $53,152.46 for restitution. Entertain a motion for restitution. A motion we approve total restitution in the amount of $53,152.46. Second. Second. A motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Yes. She said she may have to have the slab demo to some kind of way we can address that in that. Thank you, sir. Please amend it accordingly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion made and seconded for $53,152.45 restitution and any future restitution as a result of this case. All those in favor say aye. You'd be reserving aye. jurisdiction over future restitution to come back for just a restitution yeah. hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, all this uh, motion passes for restitution of $53,152.46 and any future claim resulting. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. At this time, you would need to issue a recommendation to the CILB. Entertain a motion to the CLB. I move and make a recommendation to the CILB uh, in the form of uh, the necessary fines and revocation of its license. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to recommend to the CEILB a fine and revocation is approved.
So now we move into item 13, Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2208114COM. It's in regard to Brandon and April Amos, the homeowner's complainants at 7980 Highway 97, McDavid, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Are the complainants Mr. and Ms. Amos here? Thank you. Are you going to provide testimony today? Yes. Thank you. Is Mr. Banks present? Be noted that Mr. Banks is not present. If you would please come up and be sworn in, Ms. Amos. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber has already been sworn in. All right. Um, Staff requests that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the September 7th, 2022 um, probable cause hearing be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scambia County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorded transcript regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 2208114COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none. The motion to enter the evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, was any additional documentation provided? I didn't receive anything additional. Thank you. Ms. Amos, this is your opportunity to address the board about the violations and restitution. Um, I'm not sure if I followed the proper processes, but um, last week, we received um, an email from the survey company that Matt Banks uh, used when we purchased our property we already had a survey so after we signed the contract and Matt took the initial thirty six thousand seventy five dollars he ordered another survey I'm assuming or only guessing that that was just to delay the inevitable um, so now that survey company sent me an email and an invoice and they want forty two hundred dollars I don't have $4,200 to pay them. And I tried to explain to them that we already had a survey. We did not need another survey for the 29 or 32 acres that we had already purchased the year before. Um, so I am gonna add that to my restitution amount because I will probably have to end up paying this only because I don't want a lien put on our property. Um, also, when we met with Matt um, at the property, he received our house plans. These were custom drawn house plans that we paid for. Um, I have the canceled checks for those and that totaled $2,670.75. Um, I'm requesting $42,945.75 to get my initial $36,075 back the cost of my plans because on multiple occasions we requested those back and we we got we found one set but we lost the others or we just get, didn't get a reply at all after we continued to ask and then I'd like the forty two hundred dollars I'm not sure if I, I won't be able to pay it but to me that's a subcontractor and they deserve to get their money too if there's a way that I can get ordered restitution for that put it into the fund that I may be able to get the money back then I can pay them because that's what's right um I mean it's not their fault that Matt ordered it of course he put our name on it so now I'm responsible for it and we 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 never needed it Sorry. Miss Amos, yes. did you receive a notice to owner from the survey company? Um, 
I don't believe so because I'm not really sure what that is. I, we just, the only time that we spoke to the survey company is we've spoke to them via phone when we got the email and we've only gotten emails. I'm assuming Matt provided our email, my email address um, when he ordered the survey. So a notice to owner is a document provided to you from suppliers, subcontractors, and to make you aware that if they are not paid by the general contractor, they have the ability to um, place a lien on your property. Mm -hmm. um, if they did not follow that with you, a recorded notice to owner and provide that to you, you might want to make sure that they have a, even a valid claim to put a lien against okay. you. Um, do you know how long they had to do that? Because we got this email, um, I think it was on September 29th, which was last Thursday. Do you know? I can look it up. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, would you mind handing that document to Melissa, the email, so she can make a copy of it? Um, Mr. Chairman, I think it's 45 days, but I can look it up. 45 days before the survey. Yeah, when, when after services are performed or delivered, materials delivered, whatever, I believe it's 45 days okay. to, to send a notice to owner, to owner. And when was the survey done? It, it may have been done around, no, we signed a contract um, the end of January, so it was probably completed in March or April. Around that time. Well, well within the 45 days. And was it within your contract that he would do an additional survey? No, no. We didn't, we had no idea. When he told us that he needed a survey, we even questioned why do we need a survey? We've already paid for one initially when we purchased the property. Yeah, I understand. I'm just, we're trying to help Oh, you. no, that, that's fine. Mr. Uh, Chair, I have a question. Was a notice of commencement ever filed on this job? Yes, my, I think my husband did that. Was a notice of commencement filed? We No permits were pulled, so we would not have received a copy of that. We, we can research it definitely for you. I believe my husband handled all of that, um, so I think he did do that. Yeah, but she had no effect to survey. It appears to me there's some more information that, that needs to be, uh, we need to look into. Um, as far as the charges that are involved, I think you have the evidence, uh, you could look at the evidence and make a decision on those charges, but I believe she may want to get with um, our, our building department and get better information. Okay. Um, and it, they certainly know this, uh, they know the information very well and they know how it works. Um, and then yeah, also my, work my recommendation. Work with them, because okay. they, they can help. So, so I, I misspoke. There actually were permits obtained, but we did not receive a copy of the notice of commencement. Good. Is that all you have? Uh, yeah, so if I can't do the survey, then I'd at, at least like to get the cost of my plans, only because, you know, those were oh, custom. I understand. You want to remove the survey from it, but you can come back later if, it, if you wind up having to pay. That would be great because, you know, we've both taken off work and Matt apparently. But the didn't. restitution would remove the, the $4,200 for the survey? I apologize. We were reviewing the documents yeah. over here. What was your question? No. She says if this proves out that she doesn't have to pay it, she wants to remove the $4,200 from the restitution request. Okay. And I'm suggesting we go ahead and remove it because she can come back later if she does have to pay it and uh, ask for restitution. That's right. You can reserve the right to bring this back yeah. to straight to a restitution hearing. But for, for the time being, that. let's remove it from this particular request for restitution with the understanding that you can come back. Yes, sir. So would that make the new amount 38745 It should make it. Yeah, it should make that. Yeah. Just forty-two hundred dollars subtracted from the forty-five or forty-two thousand. Thirty-eight thousand yep. seven forty-five yep. seventy-five. Yes, that's the rest. That sounds good. my calculator. Right yeah. <laughs> okay, where were you, Mr. Lister? You said thirty-eight thousand 
Seven forty-five and seventy-five cents. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's move back over to my document. Have we moved all this to evidence? We have. Yes, sir. You have. Good. At the probable cause hearing. Uh, you found that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C6, Code Section 1837C8, Code Section 1837D9J, uh, Code Section 1837D12B, and Florida Statute 49126-2A1. As to count one, does this board find the respondent in violation for financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to the customer? Motion to find guilty on count one, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made, second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, motion to approve count one and the five thousand dollar fine is approved as to count two does the board find the respondent in violation of termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for the abandonment Motion on count two, find guilty, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for count two is approved with the $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count three, does the board find a respondent in violation of failure to notify the residential property owner of the recovery fund? Repeat violation. Motion find guilty on count three, five hundred dollar fine. Repeat violation. You said repeat. Oh, repeat. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, on count three, guilty, thousand uh, dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being on all those in favor, say aye. Uh, I oppose like sign. Being done, the <clears throat> motion to approve count three is, a, is approved with a thousand dollar fine. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation of 1837 D 12B, committing fraud or deceit in the practice of contracting, causing monetary or other harm to the licensee's customer or physical harm to any person? This would be a repeat violation. A motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, count four is approved with a $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count five, this is the Florida Statute 49-126-2A1. Does the board find the respondent in violation of failure to apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date that payment is made? This is a repeat violation. A motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion for count five is approved with a $5,000 fine and revocation. There has been a request for restitution in the amount of $38,745.75. Motion, please. A motion we award restitution as requested in the amount of $38,745.75. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. And I believe there was mentioning of reserving the right to bring this back to a restitution hearing if they should provide some additional documentation. So amended. Motion made as amended. And seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. 
Motion's approved as amended. Recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. A motion for the licensing board. I'll make a motion that uh, we recommend uh, make a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board, which includes a fine and permanent revocation of its license. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to recommend to the licensing board a fine and permanent revocation is approved. Thank you, sir. Before we start the other cases in regard to Mr. Lacoste, staff will request a, a short break. We take a break till five after.
then we'll proceed. All right, Chair, we're circling back to item two. Uh, Jesse W. Lacoste, Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, State Registered License Number RG29110380. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 220684COM. It's in regard to Melissa Southard, homeowner complainant at 1425 East Mallory Street, Pensacola, Florida. This is within the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Ms. Southard, are you present? Thank you. Are you going to provide testimony today? Thank you. Mr. Lacoste, are you present? Mr. Lacoste is not present. Ms. Southard, if you could please stand and be sworn in. And just a reminder that Melissa Reber is still sworn in. Okay, staff requests at this time that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on August 3rd, 2022 be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Skimba County bid staff concerning contractor company board complaints and investigation and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorded transcript regarding contract contractor Jesse W. Lacoste, case number 220684COM, be entered into evidence for consideration of today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to enter into evidence is approved. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ms. Reber, did you receive any additional documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? No additional documentation received. Thank you. Ms. Southern? And I apologize if I'm butchering your name. Um, it, this is your opportunity to address the um, alleged violations and any restitution request. Thank you. Um, thank you for hearing me today. Uh, I, I'm certainly not going to go through all of the violations or anything like that. Um, initially, when I asked Jesse for a refund of my money, I the, and I actually did speak to him once since he was released from prison. Um, it, he told me there would be administrative fees. I, of course, he can't tell me what he spent doing the very shoddy work on the partial porch that failed an inspection on my house. Um, he never did provide an itemized list of what he spent. He did receive $103 thousand seven hundred and sixty three dollars from insurance and myself um, I had to leave my house because it's no longer uh, livable um, mold and, and uh, it's not safe to be there anymore I can't secure my home um, so my request today is for the entire amount that was provided to Jesse through my insurance company and myself what number would that be? $103,763. I do also assert that um, as part of my complaint, he failed to initially to properly dry me in, and I am by no means a contractor, so I didn't know what that meant, but I had multiple people explain that to me eventually. Um, so. There is an extensive amount of damage to that home due to his failure to properly dry the house in in 2019. Um, I, I, I'm not going to live there. I'm going to sell the home. I, I, I don't even know what it would cost to put it back to where it was, but I am at least asking for the total amount that he received. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry you have to do it. Okay, so at the probable cause hearing, the board found that there was probable cause to believe um, that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C1, Code Section 1837C12, 
Code Section 1837-D4, Code Section 1837-D10, Code Section 1837-D12B, Code Section 1837-D13-C2 for Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, and Code Section 1837-D13-C3, Code Section 1837-D15-A, Code Section 1837-D15-B, and Code Section 1837-D15-C. Quite a few counts, and we'll go through them one by one. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of disregard or failure to correct building code violations or any municipal or county building codes, ordinances, or laws in the state of Florida? Motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine. Second. Is it, you want to revoke it or suspend it? Uh, revocation, so $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for count one is approved. <clears throat> with a $5,000 fine and revocation of license. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of violating any provision of this article? Motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for count two is approved. $5,000 fine and revocation of license. As to count four, does the board find yeah. a respondent? You missed three. I mean three. I apologize. Hey. It's I'm been a long with day. You. I'm with you. <laughs> Does the board find the respondent in violation of state or local building codes or laws? Is this a repeat or initial? This is a, a first violation. Okay. Motion to find guilty on count three, twelve hundred dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, being none, the motion for count three is approved with a $1,200 fine. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation of abandonment? This would be a first violation. Uh, motion to find guilty, count four, $2,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for count four is approved with a $2,000 fine. As to count five, does the board find the respondent in violation of committing fraud or deceit in the practice of contracting, <clears throat> causing monetary or other harm to the licensee's customer or physical harm to any person? This will be a first violation. Motion to find guilty on count five, $2,000 fine. How about suspension or revocation? Uh, revocation, I'm sorry, $2,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. <laughs> Motion number five passes with a $2,000 fine and revocation. As to count six, does the board find the respondent in violation for failing to apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances? This would be a repeat violation. A motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. like sign. Being none. The motion count 
Six is approved with a $5,000 fine and revocation of license. As to count seven, does the board find the respondent in violation of any other form of misconduct or incompetency? Motion find guilty on count seven, thousand dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion for count seven is approved with a thousand dollar fine. As to count eight, does the board find the respondent in violation of late permits, contractor pools permit after starting job, but prior to completion of same and does not miss any inspections? This will be a first violation. Motion find guilty on count eight, hundred dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, being none. Count eight is approved with a hundred dollar fine. As to count nine, does the board find the respondent in violation of failure to obtain inspection? First violation. Motion find guilty on count nine, two hundred and fifty dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, count nine is approved with a $250 fine. As to count 10, does the board find the, the respondent in violation of job being finished without a permit having been pulled or no permit until caught after job or late permit during the job resulting in missed inspection or inspections? This will be a first violation. Motion find guilty, count 10, $1,500 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none. Count tens approved with a $1,500 fine. Uh, there has been a request made to the board for restitution in the amount of $103,000. $103,763. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I move we award restitution in the amount of $103,763 to the complainant with the clause that some of the work that has to be redone, tore out, she can come back to the board. Yes. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor of the motion to award $103,763 in restitution with the opportunity to, to uh, submit additional fund request. All right. Aye. Wait a minute. You had a comment? No, sir. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign, being none. The motion passes for restitution. And next we would have the recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. Before you make your recommendation, I do want to bring it to this board's attention that Mr. Lacoste obtained a state certified contractor's license. He, it is not a general contractor's license, it is a CBC, a building contractor's license. So just to put it on your radar that in your recommendation, you can recommend that they take action against his registration, but also his certification. You wanna go for that, Randy? I can, I, I think the board should make that, uh, take the action. Uh, by making a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board and include uh, the fines that, that they can impose and suspension or revocation as warranted. Of his cert state certification. Yes, um, just so, so you're aware, you can make any recommendation you want and they can decide whether or not they want to follow that recommendation. Um, so you may also uh, um, 
especially since this individual told them about the homeowner recovery fund in his contracts, you may also want to recommend that they consider it for the homeowner recovery fund. I don't know that they will. Um, it's just that you can make any recommendation you want. Um, and him being a state certified contractor, there may be some um, additional things that they can look at. Well, I think that with this, this motion, he did recommend a fine that they can impose and revocation of his state certified license. Yes, sir, but um, because they also manage, the CILB also manages the homeowner recovery fund, you may want to make a recommendation for that as well since we're dealing with a state certified contractor. Yeah, I'll, I'll amend the motion to include that um, referral to the, the recovery fund as well to be included in the recommendation to the licensing board. They'll still have to do their own hearings, but that may help that along. They still have to do their own hearings. They would not rely on a, a restitution order from this board yep. and able to do that. Second. All right. Motion been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being done, the motion passes for the recommendation to the industry licensing board. Thank you. We will now move to item three. This is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. State registered license number RG29110380. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 220325COM. It's in regard to Christopher Schofield, homeowner complainant at 7828 Coronet Drive, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Schofield, are you present? Thank you. Are you going to provide testimony today? Perfect. Uh, Mr. Lacoste, are you present? Mr. Lacoste is not present. If you could come and please be sworn in. Thank you. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber is sworn in. So my husband and I are seeking restitution in the full amount. Just, just a second. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all good. I promise you we'll get through it <laughs> together. Um, at this time, I would like to request that the backup documentation and the testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on August 3rd, 2022 be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Schema County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official record transcript regarding contractor Jesse W. Lacoste, case number 220325COM be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion is approved for the evidence submitted. Ms. Reber, did you receive any additional documentation? I didn't get anything additional. Thank you. Matt. <laughs> this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the violations and restitution. Thank you. My husband and I are seeking full restitution of $34,123.11 for funds provided to Jesse Lacoste in order to begin construction on our home, which he did not. That will also include um, monies that need to be paid to subcontractors as he failed to do so. One of them being Mr. Dillinger, who's here today. Um, I currently have two liens on my home, one from Jesse Lacoste in over $40,000, claiming that we owed him money. That was a fraudulent um, claim that he placed on our home or lien. Um, the other one is for Mr. Dillinger from Comeback Restoration in the amount of $1,500 to which Jesse did also did not pay. Okay. But that's in that $34,000? Um, it's the total amount of money that we provided Jesse initially. Okay. Good deal. So at the probable cause hearing, 
the board determined that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837-D8, Code Section 1837-D12B, and Code Section 1837-D15A. As to Count 1, does the board find the respondent in violation of mismanagement or misconduct causing financial harm to a customer? This would be a first violation. Motion to find guilty on count one, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. No. First violation, sir. Oh, first, first I'm sorry. Okay, $1,500 fine. And? And revocation. It, it doesn't include no, revocation just, on that one. You, you it's, put him on probation. <clears throat> okay, just $1,500 fine. No. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, count one is approved, $1,500 fine. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of committing fraud or deceit in the practice of contracting, causing monetary or other harm to a licensee's customer or to physical harm to any person? This would be a first violation. Motion to find guilty on count two, uh, $2,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion for count two is approved. $2,000 fine and revocation license. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of late permits, contractor fool's permit after starting job but prior to completion of same and does not miss inspections? This would be a first. Motion find guilty on count three hundred dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. Count three. Motion is approved with a hundred dollar fine. There has been a request uh, for restitution in the amount of thirty four thousand one hundred twenty three dollars and eleven cent. <clears throat> Before I make that, I just ask one question again: Is this is just the amount that y'all have paid him as a deposit? But there may be more than that. Um, I heard well, you say forty thousand in liens or payout. Jesse filed a lien on our home for over forty thousand dollars. He tried to defraud our mortgage company because they held the remaining seventy-two thousand dollars that he was claiming he was entitled to that he had completed work, which he did not even begin the work. He hired subcontractors like Mr. Dillinger, who's here today, to come in and provide work, but failed to pay them. So Jesse filed a lien on our home for over $40,000 because he couldn't get the money from our mortgage company. And then Mr. Dillinger had to file a lien against our home because he didn't get paid by Jesse. So the 34,000 is just our portion of the money that we paid Jesse as initial funds so i would like to move that we award thirty four thousand one hundred twenty three dollars and eleven cents in initial restitution with the option of coming back to the board based on any future occurrences okay thank you second motion made and seconded in further discussion being none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed like sign being none the motion the restitution of $34,123.11 is approved with the opportunity to bring more back if you have to. Thank you. At this time, the board would need to make a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. Again, from the previous hearing, we know that Mr. Lacoste holds both a state registered and state certified license. I'll move that we make a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board um, for the appropriate fines, revocation, uh, restriction of registration, and uh, any other penalties they have to impose. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Can you repeat the Can you repeat it real quick? Just Fine, suspension, mm -hmm. revocation, and any other action that they can take. So it'd be. Uh, 
Suspension and revocation are, are two different items, so we're going to need It was revocation. To, okay. And for both licenses, correct? Correct. Okay. Both licenses. Thank you for that Thanks. clarification. Motion uh, clarified. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being done. The motion approved for the recommendation of the industry licensing board. All right, our next item is item seven. Let me get on down there. Yep. Item seven is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, <clears throat> LLC. State registered license number RG29110398. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 220685COM. It's in regard to Thomas and Bonnie Chanteau. Thank you. Homeowners complainants at 6009 Shandell Circle, Pensacola, Florida. The proper notice was sent to the respondent. I see that Mr. Chanteau is present. Are you going to provide testimony today? Thank you. Is Mr. Lacoste present? Mr. Lacoste is not present. Um, Mr. Chanteau, if you'll please be sworn in. At this time, uh, I would like to request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on August 3rd, 2022 be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation be submitted to the Scamba County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations and previous probable calls testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding contractor Jesse W. LaCrosse, case number 220685COM be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. <clears throat> Being none, the motion to enter into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, did you receive any additional documentation in regard to this case? No, I did not. Thank you. Mr. Chanteau, it's your opportunity to address the violations and as well as any restitution requests. Thank you very much. First of all, I appreciate you all being here and doing this because we wouldn't have anything, you know, to, to go uh, against these guys if you didn't because they're just wreaking havoc everywhere. Um, my wife and I, uh, we, and I won't rehash the whole thing, of course we had Hurricane Sally incident um, and we um, had gotten uh, Lacoste construction by way of, uh, we had, um, the people had come in and done the demo work, we didn't have anybody else and we asked them, so thankfully they got paid first, so they, um, they weren't even, that wasn't even part of it. So then Lacoste, uh, we did a, a contract which we should, never should have done with them signing for those for those rights for them to come in and and uh, and do that work, which took forever to get commenced uh, and was uh, very minimal at best. It had gotten into the cold weather and and uh, on into starting on into the warm weather. So I started doing all the reconstruction myself, and um, they finally sent a guy out for a couple weeks you know, uh, who did some minimal amount of work. Uh, and then the only other works that were done was when I had months and months and months later said, hey, I, you know what, just talk to my lawyer. And um, so then they sent uh, another guy, two guys out for a day and a half, and then they left with my floor half torn up and sticking up shards. So i am just uh, been doing all this work myself. My work is worth as much as their work is they, uh, they're, so what my wife and I, um, their final payment check that went to them was $36,659.39 from Citizens Insurance. So I, those guys did do a little bit of work. I'm not asking for the whole amount because they did do some work. You know, um, I believe that you had said though that they had not pulled any permits for the work. Is that correct? Um, so I don't know how much, you know, uh, 
because they used a lot of my tools to do their work. I don't know that uh, what they uh, what they had going on there, but um, that's the amount that we're asking for with a reserve right that if if my costs are going over this amount, that I'd be able to go come back at a later and maybe look at some of the other monies. I don't know if that's reasonable or not. Or Can you provide a numerical amount just for today and then? That is, yes. Uh, it's mm -hmm. $36,659.39, which was the final payment that they received. Um, and I believe they received three total. But I, it may have been two, but I think it was three. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> thank you all. All right, at the probable cause hearing, the board found probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837 D8, Code Section 1837 D12B, and Code Section 1837 D15. Okay. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of mismanagement or misconduct causing financial harm to the customer? This would be a Motion first violation. Motion to find oh, guilty on count one, a uh, fifteen hundred dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none. The motion is approved. $1,500 fine for count one. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of committing fraud or deceit in the practice of contracting, causing monetary or other harm to licensee's customer or physical harm to any person? Again, first violation. Motion to find guilty on count two, $2,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion for count two is approved with a $2,000 fine and revocation of license. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of proceeding on any job without obtaining applicable local building department permits and or inspections? And if you notice in the penalty guidelines, because this is the umbrella, unless at the probable cause hearing you had selected one of the subsections, there is no penalty guideline for the actual umbrella. You didn't select one of these subsections because he didn't pull a permit at all. And the subsections speak to pulling a permit late or failing to get an inspection. So you can find the respondent in violation. You just would not have a disciplinary action. We just find it by violation. Uh, motion to find him guilty on count three, um, hundred dollar fine. There is no fine. Okay, no fine. Mm -hmm. So okay. We just just guilty, guilty on count three. So. Need a second. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like <clears throat> sign. Being none. Count count three. Motion is approved. Guilty. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. There has been a request for restitution in the amount of $36,659.39. Motion on restitution. And the request to reserve jurisdiction. And reserve. I have a question maybe before we get into that. And so the 36 was the amount of the last check. The last check. How much do you have a... Um, I do. Detailing of, of, I mean, it could be more than that. Is that it is, what I'm hearing? I thought I heard you say it, it really is, should be more. It's well, there's a total of 50. So, my initial payment was because uh, that I put in myself to get a roof put on was 22,000. Then, when we got a, we got Lacoste on board. They had uh, applied for and gotten, looks like 15,124, which I figure for what minimal amount of work that they did, that's about what they earned, okay? So that's why I'm only asking for their final check, which was 36,659. I'm trying to be reasonable about this. Do you feel but, like that's a, 
uh, accurate number as good as you can tell for yeah. the amount of work that was required. What, okay. what they did, right. uh, you know, I would have, you know, I don't think I would have paid 15000 for, but, you know. I understand. I mean, Just making sure we cover you, that's the main yeah. thing. So, if my part goes over this, because they didn't, you know, they they put in for lots of, lots of things that they actually intended not to do, and my insurance paid for it up front. So, you know, if I end up going over this, getting into those myself, then that's why I wanted to reserve that right. So I move that we award the complainant $36,659.39 right. with the clause of him being able to come back yes, to the please. board in the future for any funds above that. Thank you. A, a Mr. Second. Mr. A second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. No. Being none, the motion for the restitution of $36,659.39 with the option of coming back with additional is approved. And your recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. And if you would like, so we don't have to compete, come redo this every single time, during your motion, you could recommend that this motion be for all subsequent hearings, and that way we're not restating this okay. over and over and over. Unless you feel that there's a change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody feel like there's gonna be a change? No, go ahead. <laughs> Just make the motion to it. Just making make sure. It worse. Um, I move we take action by making a recommendation to the conduct Construction Industry Licensing Board, which may include uh, a fine, uh, revocation, restriction of, of his registration, and uh, any other action that they see fit, and that this uh, motion would carry for the remainder of these cases today for Mr. Lacoste. Second. Very good. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for the recommendation of the licensing board is approved. All right, so we're moving on to item eight. eight. Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. State registered license number RG29110380. Contractor competency board complaint number 220677COM. It's in regard to John Hutchinson, homeowner complainant at 3451 Oakmont Drive, Pensacola, Florida, within the city limits. The respondent, uh, Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Hutchinson, are you present? Awesome. Are you going to provide testimony today? Perfect. Mr. Lacoste, are you present? Again, Mr. Lacoste is not present. Mr. Hutchinson, if you could please be sworn in. And as a reminder, Ms. Reber has already been sworn in. Staff would request at this time that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 7th, 2022, be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Escambia County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding Contractor Jesse W. Lacrosse, case number 220677COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved for evidence introduction. Ms. Reber, was there any additional documentation provided? No, there was not. Mr. Hutchinson, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the violations and restitution. 
Thank you. I won't take much of your time. First of all, I appreciate the decisions you're making regarding this contractor. Uh, he needs to, he needs to be sent a message, and all contractors do. Uh, second of all, the four counts uh, that were identified in a probable cause hearing, I would ask that you find him guilty on all four counts uh, and that you impose a maximum fine on all four counts. I would also ask that you recommend to the state the, the motion that, that does uh, ask them to do the same, uh, plus uh, restitution, and I'm asking for restitution in the amount of $17,000. Thank you. Thank you. At the probable cause hearing, the board determined that there was probable cause to believe the respondent violated Code Section 1837 C8, Code Section 1837 C11, Code Section 1837 D3A, and Code Section 1837 D13 C2. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract two shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Motion to find guilty on count one, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being done, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for count one is approved with a $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting? Motion find guilty on count two, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, all, the motion for count two is approved with a $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of fraud, deceit, misleading, or untrue representations? This would be a first violation. Motion to find guilty on count three, $3,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for count three is approved with $3,000 fine and revocation. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation for failing to apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances? This would be a repeat violation. Motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for count four is approved with a $5,000 fine and revocation. There has been a request before this board for restitution in the amount of $17,000. I did have a question on that, Mr. Chairman. The 17 just represents the check that you had written nothing's done so basically this is just clearing cleaning you up Mr. Hudson that's correct I wrote him a check for $17,000 uh, their work was never done except that a design was done by a landmark design company he did not pay them they've not requested money from me either but that that would be minimal but the restitution to me would be $17,000 okay yes sir thank you then I move that we award the complaint at seventeen thousand dollars in restitution. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for restitution of seventeen thousand dollars is approved. Yes, sir. And the previous recommendation for the CILB will be filed with this final order. Thank you. Our next item is number 999, nine, nine, 
Jesse W. Lacoste, doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. State registered license number RG29110390. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 220689COM. It's in regard to Michael Moss, the homeowner complainant at 2054 Mackey Key Drive, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Moss, are you present? Yes. Awesome, thank you. Are you gonna provide testimony today? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Lacoste, are you present? Again, Mr. Lacoste is not present. Uh, Mr. Moss, if you'll please be sworn in. All right, and as a reminder, Ms. Reber was already be, was already sworn in. At this time, I would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 7th, 2022, be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scammy County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorded transcript regarding contractor Jesse W. Lacoste, case number 220689COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Being none, the motion to enter into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were any additional documentations received in, in regard to this case? Nothing additional. Thank you. Mr. Moss, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the violations and restitution amount. Okay, uh, I'll keep it uh, short and sweet as well. Um, listen, I did just send you an email. Okay, you got it, okay. Um, uh, we've received no um, communication from Jesse uh, Lacoste since uh, sending him our uh, demand letter back in early June. Um, as I said on the probable cause hearing, that letter was signed for on June 16th um, um, via certified mail, but uh, was returned to us uh, about six weeks later in mid-August uh, unopened. Uh, we also sent it via email to Jesse as well just to cover both, uh, both sides. Uh, no communication since then. In that letter, we did ask for an itemized um, accounting of any expenses for our contract, uh, which was just in the planning and design stages uh, for about nine months. Um, uh, we asked for that to be provided to us within 30 days. Of course, that did not happen either. So. Um, in light of that, we're asking for full restitution of the $24,000 that we provided to Jesse Lacoste under contract on August 13th of 2021 uh, for renovation of our house. Thank you. Sorry you have to go through this. Draver, so he did provide you an email um, if you want to go ahead and provide testimony as to what was provided. Um, in the email Mr. Moss um, recently provided, it does have um, copies of the returned uh, mailings that he sent out. All right. At the probable cause hearing, the board found probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C6, Code Section 1837C8, Code section 1837C11, code section 1837D13C2, code section 1837D13C3. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to a customer? Motion find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. <clears throat> Being none. Count one. Motion is approved. $5,000 fine and revocation. 
As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment? Motion to find guilty on count two, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded to any further discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Being none, the motion for a revocation and $5,000 fine, count two is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of a finding that the contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting? Motion to find guilty on count three, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Being none. Count three is approved with $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation for failing to apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances? This would be a repeat violation. Motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine. No, nope. first mm -hmm. violation. Repeat violation, repeat. sir. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Uh, Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Being none, count four is approved. $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count five, does the board find the respondent in violation of any other form of misconduct or incompetency? Repeat violation. Motion to find guilty, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like, sign. Being none, count five is approved with a fine of $5,000 fine and revocation. Mr. Moss. And we have restitution. I did not write down a restitution amount for you. Was it? 24000 24000 there has been a request for restitution in the amount of twenty-four thousand. I move that we award. I move that we award the complainant twenty-four thousand dollars in restitution. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Is there any possibility of you getting you know, any additional restitution, Mr. Moss? I don't think so. Um, we, um, in the planning stages, we did uh, go out uh, and uh, start purchasing our appliances from Ferguson, and those are starting to come in. We just got a, a call about two hours ago um, that our kitchen sink is in. Of course, we have no kitchen to put it into, uh, <laughs> no cabinets. So uh, we're going to start receiving that stuff and storing it in our garage until we can get a new contractor rolling okay. on our, our stuff. So um, unless that all falls apart and we're stuck with appliances that uh, that we have nowhere to put, then uh, then I don't think there's going to be anything else. But, okay. uh, but that, that's, that's the only other All right. Just wanted to make sure. Give you every opportunity. So motion is approved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Uh, opposed, like, sign. Being none, the motion for a restitution of $24,000 for Mr. Michael Moss is approved. Thank you. And also the CILP recommendation will be forwarded. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One more to go. We have two. Oh, yeah, two. I missed one. So item 10, Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as a cost construction group, LLC. State registered license number RG29110380. Contractor competency board complaint number 2208107COM. 
It's in regard to Willie and Kalita Stevens, homeowner complainants at 4125 Kingsbury Drive, Pensacola, Florida, within the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. It is my understanding that Ms. Reber might have some information on the, the Stevens. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Stevens had to leave. He had a scheduled meeting, but um, there is already documentation in uh, the backup, the amount that he is requesting for restitution, restitution and uh, there is a breakdown of that if that needs to I'm be explained. explained. What is that number? Um, there is a, the total amount is eleven thousand three seventy three thirty five. However, um, in that request is that six thousand five hundred dollars be paid to a subcontractor, J and M Plumbing, who uh, Lacoste did not pay. So uh, the Stevens are looking for themselves four thousand. Eight seventy-three thirty-five. Yeah, but he could receive the eleven thousand and just pay the subcontractor. Within their demand letter, it specifically said either you pay me my amount due and pay the subcontractor, or you pay me the total amount and I will make the subcontractor whole. So eleven thousand three seventy-three. We can give him eleven thousand and he can pay the subcontractor. Yes. Um. So the the complainants are not present. Um, is Mr. Lacoste present? Oh. Mr. Lacoste again is not present. Um, at this time, staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 7th, 2022 be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Schema County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations in previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding contractor Jesse W. Lacoste, case number 2208107COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none. The uh, motion for introduction into evidence is approved. All right. At the probable cause hearing, the board determined that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C5, Code Section 1837C6, and Code Section 1837D13C2. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of diversion of funds or property received for prosecution or completion of a particular construction project or operation by the contractor when as a result of such diversion, the contractor is or will be unable to fulfill the terms of his obligations or contract? Motion to find guilty on count one, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being done, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion's approved, $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting? Motion to find guilty on count two, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for count two is approved with $5,000 fine and revocation. As to count three, does the board find the response payment is made? Repeat violation. Motion to find guilty, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for count three is approved. $5,000 fine and revocation. Yes, sir. And there has been a request for restitution in the amount of $11,373.35. I move that we award the complainant restitution in the amount of $11,373.35. Second. 
Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like to sign. Being none, the motion is for uh, restitution of $11,373.35 is approved. And the previous CILB recommendation will be provided with this final order as well. Very good. And our last item, <coughs> item 11. Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. State registered license number RG29110380. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2208124COM in regard to Donald Dellinger doing business as Comeback Restoration, complainant at 1809 East Bar Street, Pensacola, Florida, City Limits. The proper, no uh, proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Dellinger, are you present? All right. M Mr. Dellinger is not present. Mr. Lacoste, are you present? Mr. Lacoste is also not present. Was Mr. Dellinger here earlier? He was earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have not met him, but I heard someone say that he was here. I, I text him and he hasn't answered. All right. Um, so at this time, staff would request that um, the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 7th, 2022 be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Skimmick County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding contractor Jesse W. Lacrosse, case number 2208124COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion <coughs> for evidence introduction is approved. Ms. Reaver, was any additional documentation provided and is it attached to the agenda? Yes, um, Mr. Dillinger did provide additional documentation which is included in today's agenda, but I also, um, after the agenda, received some information, uh, basically a statement from uh, Sandra Gray, who uh, had services performed by uh, Mr. Dillinger's company. Um, Mr. Dillinger's claims are that he was not paid for work that he invoiced the cost for, the Grays say they basically can't confirm or deny um, what work was done in their home or, or what Mr. Lacoste was billed for because Mr. Lacoste would not provide them any documentation on how much money he received or what he did with the money. So they just wanted that on record. Mr. Del is Mr. Dellinger requesting a restitution in a speci specified amount, and can you please provide that amount? Yes, um, Mr. Dellinger did, after the last hearing, go back and provide all of the invoices that he submitted uh, to je build Jesse Lacoste for, and that total amount is... Should be on your screen right now. $90,547.57. Thank you. Very good. So staff would request that any additional documentation and now testimony be moved into evidence as well. So moved. Motion to move it into evidence. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move additional evidence into uh, consideration is approved. At the probable cause hearing, the board uh, determined that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated code section 1837 C6. 
As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to the customer? Motion to find guilty on count one, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion for count one is approved. $5,000 fine and revocation. That's the only one. That's accurate. Um, there we has do been have a, the recommendation of the. There's been a request for restitution in the amount of $90,547.57. I move that we award the complaint at $90,547.57 in restitution. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Being none, a motion to provide Mr. Dillinger a restitution of $90,000, $90,547.57 is approved. And the recommendation to the CILB will be forwarded along with the final order. Any further business before this board? Well, I would say, go ahead. Chair, I'd just like to move that all the information that from today be forwarded to the state's attorney's office again. Just to make sure that they're keeping, you know. They'll do it. We don't have, that's not a motion. He doesn't need to make a motion. We, we automatically They automatically do it. Automatic, so. I just want to, okay. Any further business? So, yes, sir. One, I want to thank you guys for continually showing up. And I know this has been a very expedited, strenuous schedule. And so I want to say thank you because I know it's not that easy. Um, tomorrow, the Board of County Commissioners will be reviewing applications for the vacancy from uh, Ms. Fiorello's re resignation. So hopefully we'll have a new board member coming on shortly. I plan on uh, speaking with that board member and seeing if they would like to attend the October 11th board meeting. Um, and that way so they can get familiar with the process. I know that in the advertisement it said November meeting would be their first active meeting. But I think it would be a good idea for them to, to come in next week. Um, also, the, the BCC is accepting applications um, for a business person from the vacancy of um mr downs um so if anybody just to put it out into the world if, if any business person in escambia county uh would like to submit their resume they can submit it to us um so that's all i have for you the question that we have one of the board members has on this email y yes sir. has to be investigated do what sir i said is it you guys are going to follow up with this so yes sir so what it is uh, in the email that was provided um, was some communication in regard to one of our contractor applications um, yes we are going to follow up with that and ensure that the proper information was put on the, the person's application um, it references a state certified contractor in that email and we do not have jurisdiction over his application to the state the state would have jurisdiction over that it also talks about um, possible background checks or financial checks. That's not within our requirements by ordinance. So for that to be a requirement, it would have to go before the BCC for approval. But yes, we are going to be looking into the allegations within that email. That's good. You have something to say? Okay. We're adjourned. If you can find some place to go to lunch, enjoy. Hey, Mike.